Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown is an action-adventure platformer game inspired by the Metroidvania genre and set in a mythical Persian world. Play as Sargon, a young, gifted Persian fighter, and grow from a dual-sword prodigy to an extraordinary warrior, gradually mastering new time powers and unlocking super abilities. The game currently is available on Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC, and Luna. You can also play the free demo now. And you, for more information, please visit PrinceofPersia.com. Hello, everybody. My name is Conception, and I am so, so happy and excited to be here for a very special episode of GDQ Hotfix, where we're going to be featuring Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, the brand new game uh, from Ubisoft in the Prince of Persia series. We're going to be uh, staying focused in this entire episode on The Lost Crown. We're going to be breaking down a lot of different things. We have a glitch showcase to show you. We're going to have a race as well as somebody who's going to be completing the game from that race onward and even a special uh, presentation and interview from some of the developers of the game. So I'm very, very excited to be able to share all this with you. We've been working hard on this behind the scenes and it has just been a, a, an absolute joy to get this going. But I think we're gonna jump right into it. Uh, we're going to be kicking off today with a glitch showcase of the game. Now this game is brand new, of course. So uh, of course there are probably going to be more glitches and exploits and tricks perhaps found in the future. But for uh, right now, we're going to showcase uh, as much as we can of the uh, glitches, tricks, and everything that has been shown. And the person who is going to be doing that is Toka. So Toka, the floor is yours. Show us some cool glitches. <laughs> I'll try my best. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, Yes, that's me. I'm Toka. Hello, everybody. Um, I will try my best to, within the next um, hour, roughly, to show you what this game has to offer. Now, as uh, Conception rightfully said, this game has only been out for a short while. Um, and yet, as you will hopefully see within the next hour, it's incredible how much people, well, we really have found already. Mm -hmm. um, and really, um, if there's nothing being against it, I would just jump right in, hit that button to start the game, go into a save file, and um, um, really start explaining and showing stuff. And well, to be fair, this is supposed to be a glitch exhibition, and it, we will we will certainly get there. Don't get me wrong, but to just you know to just get a feeling for this game, let's first look at some something more basic, something like the movement. So. Mm -hmm. um, to, to understand what um, what you can do in this game. So as, as, as was said already, this is a basic um, 2D platformer. Um, so running, jumping, fighting, all that stuff, all in there. Um, now what's special about Prince of Persia and always has been in the past, so this is very in line with the history of the franchise, is that you get certain um, upgrades, some of them related to the time power. Um, some of the more basic ones used for um, movement would be the dash action. So what I could do, for example, is I could uh, start running. As, as you see, that started by, by sliding, start running. Um, could jump and then dash here. That's the dash. Um, very cool move. My opinion makes for great platforming. Um, from a speedrunning perspective, of course, the advantage is that dashing is pretty fast. I mean, you're leaping forward, which by definition should be fast, and it is. Um, that's the movement you'll see Eraser and Veneve do later on quite a lot, where you try to dash as much as possible. You little jump to start the dash, and then jump, dash, jump, dash, jump, dash. Um, so without glitches, this would be the fastest movement. The term glitch is a bit ambiguous, but I will not. Um, I will no, not open that can of worms. So let's just let's just go with that for now. <laughs> um, right. So so dashing all the way, um, fastest way to move. Of course, um, there are certain ways to interrupt movement, as it has to be in a, a quick, um, a fast-paced action platformer. Um, so you can interrupt the dash with certain actions like uh, parrying there, as you saw. Um, or you can also interrupt the slide by things like uh, jumping or attacking or whatever. And uh, well, as you have seen, sliding here, that's the fast part of um, of the whole, the whole running thing. Of course, running is fast, 
But sliding on itself, especially the first part, is pretty quick. So what we can do to interrupt um, to to interrupt the slide and to get the to kind of chain the fastest part of the movement um, is the following. That's one of a few options that I'll show. First of which is we could um, stop the slide by attacking. So sword slash. You may hear through the microphone there is um, heavy button mashing going on. I'm not going that direction, but the other one, you saw that. Um, slide attack, like the attack cancels. That's not super fast, but it's on par with running. If done well, it's a bit quicker. So ju just to show you that um, actions can be canceled and we can use that to our advantage to go fast. Now, we can go faster. And we will Ooh. go faster. Ooh, okay. And what's key for the next one is we will um, use a different kind of weapon. So we get the sword from the get-go, which given the game makes sense. Um, pretty early into the game, we get the bow, which is the first power-up. Um, here we see a bow. There's also an option to use the, you know, the chakram here. You can throw the bow, basically. Now, shooting the bow, or even just getting out the bow, not even shooting it, can also be used to cancel out the slide action. And that, if done well, looks something like this. Woo! That is speedy. That was very good. Like Usually, if you don't get the rhythm right, the Sargon will shoot arrows occasionally, which is a bit slow. Um, but that, I mean, just looking at it, that is decently fast, I would argue. Yes, I would say so as well. <laughs> right. Now, what if you went a bit faster? No. <laughs> because it turns out, it, it, there, there's more to come. I, I can promise you that much. Um, so the, right, the, the, the point of the, the um, bow slide cancel, or rather the disadvantage, is that we don't have it from the get-go, right? It's, an, it's a, um, a weapon we pick up roughly 10 minutes to the, the speed run, 10, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Um, so is there a version to go fast without the bow? And it turns out, of course, well, that was a leading question. Of course there is. Um, and it's quite intuitive as well, from, in, in a certain sense at least. Because what we can do is we can cancel the slide with another slide. While the slide is happening, we can just slide again. Um, for that, we have to let go of all buttons and then press the directional input and the slide key. Or well, the, the key has a few um, uses in the game, but for us, it's slide key, press both of, the, of those at the same time, let go, press again, let go. So if done slowly, it looks like this. It's kind of on par with the, the bow slide cancel. But we could also be faster. Whoa. <laughs> oh my gosh. We're just zoom, zooming through this zoom. game. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So that move, that's the fastest currently known movement. Um, at least if we don't count things that are 100% clearly a glitch. For this, it's a biggest. There have been discussions, as I said, different topic. Can talk for a whole, whole other hour about this. Um, now, just as a note, this movement you will not see later on in the run, because for the speedrun.com challenge, um, the $10,000 challenge, this movement has been um, disallowed because, as you can imagine, if you're um, mashing keys such a, so quickly paced throughout the whole run, that just takes a toll on your hands. And um, in spirit of accessibility, um, that was, um, yeah, it was decided that um, that's just not a thing people have to put up with. Sure, yeah, that, I would imagine that is taxing on the hands. A absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Um, even after rebinding, so usually um, that move is on, I think, on control, shift or control, one of the two. Um, so that and the directional input are a bit far apart, so you have to use your pinky, and that's really what makes it um, kind of kind of tedious. Yeah, but if you rebind it to something like F, um, like D and F are right next to each other, right? And then, then it's all right if you don't do it for too long. But that being said, Let's try something else here. Let's 
try this. That may be good. Oh, this may take a few tries, so please bear with me. This is a bit precise, but it will be worth the payoff. I can promise you that much. There we go. And <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> what? <laughs> what was that? That was the Chakram Super Slide. So as I said, once you pick up the bow, shortly after you also get the Chakram, so you can throw the bow, basically. Now you'll notice that when I slide into the wall from a, um, from a certain distance that's rather specific, the wall will push Sargon out. I'll try for a few more times without the Chakram just to see. So there. That didn't work. Like, if, if you really look at it, it's pretty clear when it works. Uh, one more. As I said, this is rather precise. I just want to get it once more, then I, I, I'll explain what happens, actually. There we go. Like if you noticed, you saw the wall pushing Sargon out. Um, and what that means in terms of a game mechanics is that um, at least most likely how this works. Of course, I don't know the code, but just from looking at it, the Sargon's speed as he slides into the wall is continuously lowered, so he gets pushed out. And that process of lowering the speed, that's, that has to literally be what happens, because that lowering is what we interrupt by using the chakram. So if we do this, Get it once more. I'll try to at least just because it's so cool. There we go. The speech just builds up and up and up. It's, basic, it's basically a backwards long jump, like an SMC4. It's the same idea that backwards speech just gets added up. Um, it's not capped, and you zoom around the room. Wow. Would not have guessed that we have a SM64 like skip in this game, or, or trick rather. Yeah, it, indeed. It's, it's kind of funny, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's the, that's the currently fastest known way to move in this game. However, to add a bit of context, uh, context because I think that's interesting, the Trackrum Super Slide um, is not as useful as one might think, at least currently, because it requires a wall and uh, as well as a rather precise setup. And it only is really worth if there's a lot of build-up, as you saw, the longer you go, of course, the more speed there is. And comp compared to that, for smaller quote-unquote rooms you would just do this because on average um, that's still faster so j just to make the point that um, just because there is really fast tech doesn't automatically mean that it's um, also the way to go fast in a speed run mm -hmm. at least not currently things might change we might discover new things as conception as you've pointed out is a new game there's a lot mm -hmm. to be found f down the line yeah, consistency and setup time is key there. Yeah, for sure. Ab absolutely. Yes. Yep. Right. So, with that, I think we have a um, rough feeling for how to move in this game, how to play this game, at least on a basic level. Um, and now I'll quickly do some silent setup in the background. And if done correctly, we will now load into a different area. Here we are. Now, this is pretty early into the game. The other thing was a 100% safe, so I could just um, go everywhere on the map. As you may see, there's not much map uncovered here. So this is really from the start of the game to here, straight line. Nothing happened. Yet. We also don't have any powers. We don't have the dash, don't have the bow, nothing. We are kind of um, stuck at the base with with the base moves that the game has to offer. Um, and this is where another part of movement in the broadest sense comes into play. Um, that's useful. It's not movement in the literal sense, but it's used as part of movement. That's what I mean, and you'll see why I say that in a second. So one of the base combat moves in this game is attacking attacking the air. Um, so you can jump at enemies and then attack. You see Sargon kind of... Well, if there were an enemy, Sargon would kind of hover in the air right now. He's just falling. However, there are some moves where you um, do hover in the air. So there you see me attacking up. 
and suddenly my um, my falling speed is set to zero. But when I do that, and it has to build up again. And there are a few moves like that. You can also take down, for example, same thing. Now, um, sadly, you cannot chain these. You cannot chain the same one together. So I cannot continuously attack up to hover across the map. Sadly, so if I try that, um, I'm sure you trust me that I tried and it didn't work. So the next best thing is to try to alternate that. So let's stack up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Nice way to hover. Um, which admittedly doesn't look as big as, for example, the Chakram Super Slide. Um, but I'll show you a skip with it right now. And it goes a little something like this. And we did a skip. Oh. This saves... Um, one minute, one and a half. I don't. I never. We never timed it, because this is the very first skip that was found in the game. So you see there are these um, purple poisonous vines there, which is supposed to prevent you from getting over. And actually, if you just dash and jump, you cannot make it. You will not grab the wall. But by doing that hover, you can cross that gap. And what that skips is a mini boss called Erlik. Um, it's like a big hog of enemy. Um, it's the first minibus of the game. And going this way, um, by going this way, we kind of approach Erlik as well as the bow, which you pick up after that from, from the back. So instead of going down there, down that gap there, and around to the boss, fight the boss, after that's the bow, we can just skip all of that. So again, to make the point that um, just because things look small, they can be incredibly useful. And there are a um, number of uses for that throughout the run, some of which um, some of which you'll actually see later on. Might have been a bit underwhelming to look at, but uh, you'll appreciate no. it later on during the tournament. No, it was cool. It, it's, it's very clean. It was a very clean skip, which I really like. It's, it's like kind of like calming in a way. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 guess, I guess that's true, yeah. Yeah. Um, right. So, um, for the for, like one final movement thing, which one may argue is a glitch, one can argue against it. Again, different kind of worms. Um, before we get to the bigger things, so again, we're in a platformer, so something like wall jumping, integral part of the game. Um, at this point, I would say it's even intuitive at least somebody who like if you've played video games for a long time you'll say yeah, of course there's wall jump there has to be wall jumping in this game and as we get power-ups throughout the game the, like the dash there's a double jump um, we can also climb walls so you could jump off the wall and dash jump off again dash jump off dash to infinitely climb walls right now um we don't have the ability to, to do that so if i here if i would try anything you see i, I always type However, there's one specific combo which circumvents that, and it looks a little something like this. There we go. Ooh. It's a um, timed combination of jumping, attacking, and blocking. If we were to just jump and attack, I would go further away from the wall. By blocking, it's basically um, basically paused, and we can move towards the wall quicker than we usually would. Uh, to be fair, there I could have just used the leaf. There was no skip here, that was just to show yeah. things off. Makes sense, yeah. Still really cool. Yeah, it's really interesting how momentum kind of works in this game. Totally, yeah. And it also took a while to figure that out. Mm -hmm. um, or to figure out this version. There was another version that was very difficult. Now this one, incredibly easy. And... Give me another second. I can actually show you what the implications of these are. If I did it correctly. Let's go, Sargon. Yes, this is the start of the game. You'll see this later on. Um, what you'll probably see is something like this, where Raiden Beneath will do continuous dashing and running. It's the fastest um, 
no major glitches move in this game. Now instead, this is what the beginning looks like if you try to it's the rush of our They're really just zooming out there. Now this first fight of the game, as you might imagine, this is a tutorial kind of area so the game tells you press X to attack. But what if we just didn't do that? And I'm out. Bye-bye. <laughs> of fire! Keep running, Sargon! We must eliminate those Nishan archers. Leave it to me! Well, it's a bummer. Now you'll never learn how to play the game, Toka. I'm sorry about that. That's true. Well, luckily I'm not <laughs> running today, so I, I, this, this burden's on my shoulders. <laughs> now, um, there's a second gate in early game where you can do the same thing. There's a third one, however, where things are slightly different, and I want to show that off as well. Also because I think that will be... Um, there we go. will be quite cool to look at for people who already played the game. So at the end of the tutorial, there is um, there's a fight against the Sword Hero. Also, I'll very quickly cheat right here. I hope you forgive me, so I don't have to um, lose too much time on this. We'll allow it. We'll allow it. <laughs> For now. <laughs> right, so here we are in the fight with the Swordmaster. And you see, up there, if I would, um, would try wall jumping, I'm kind of bonking against this ceiling thing here. Mm -hmm. But with a slightly different timing, assuming I get this, this one is more difficult. So this one may actually take a few tries. Or I could just get it first try. Because yeah, first try, so it. easy. Yeah. There you go. And put stand here, and the fight is over. Woo! Just like that. That's so cool. Um, yeah, so this is this interesting feature, or uh, no feature, lab, but behavior of the game, where um, if you exit a room during a boss fight, no matter which one, um, which to be fair isn't possible under normal circumstances, so this really is an exploit. Um, exiting a room during a boss fight makes the game think that the fight has been completed. So by exiting that area, um, because behind that gate there's an, there's an area, um, um, like a switch area trigger, the game's like, there's no other way um, he has to have completed that fight. I let Toka progress. And I'm grateful for that. That's, that's cool. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> That is, yeah, very gracious, very gracious. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed it is. Also keep that in mind for later, this, this um, game logic in this regard. We'll, we may see this again. Okay. Now, um, in a few glitches already, some smaller, some bigger, some faster. It's time that we get into the meat of it, I would say. And for that, we do need a few more powers. I'll quickly load another safe. Here we are. So um, we've seen already that we have plenty of options for fast and versatile, versatile horizontal movement. But for vertical movement, other than the, well, the wall jumping thing, we are cur currently quite limited. And I would argue this is the point where the real glitch showcase starts. It's kind of funny saying that while I zoom across the map. Um, <laughs> but you understand what that means. So yes. I've loaded into this to a safe in front of the first actual boss of the game. Here, if I enter this room, cutscene, um, this first boss, Jandar, also known as the Manticore in the game. And honestly, fighting the uh, playing the game, fighting, um, too difficult. After all, I never learned it. I haven't completed the tutorial, so I don't know how this. That's works. right. Yeah, you don't even know how to swing your sword. That's true. Uh, basically, yeah. Um, <laughs> So, right, you, so you, you would complete the fight. After that, uh, you get your first power up. That there's like a feather hovering in the room, and then you go around and you fall down back here. Like up, if you look up there, there's this kind of ledge where you fall mm -hmm. down. Yep. Um, it's kind of hard to see. Sorry, let me let me go up there. This is where you would fall down. You would uh, go all the way around. Right, you would fall down here. This is where you fall down, and then uh, here, that's where the feather is. So this is where you would pick up the, the pop-up. <laughs> wow. Just did everything in the reverse. It's like you were re rewound yourself, basically. 
<laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> As you may have noticed, we did something kind of weird there. Multiple things, actually. Um, the biggest one, of course, being the flight pitch. I, I just flew up there. And it is, as of now, and I think it will stay like that for a very long time, maybe forever, one of the biggest glitches of the game, um, mm -hmm. which kind of makes sense. You have two directions to move in, and in one, you can just, you can just peace out. And so the way, the way this works... Um, it's actually really simple. It's incredible. If you want to boot up your game, assuming you have the game, um, boot up a game, want to try it yourself, very simple. Um, you need three actions for that. First, you jump. Right after the jump, um, you shoot, shoot an arrow. And as with the infinite wall jump thing, at the end of that, you put a, um, put a parry, parry action there. And if you do that in quick succession, this is what it looks like. Wow. Right, so by, by jumping and shooting the bow, um, there... As, okay, first I should say, I don't know exactly how this one happen, uh, how this one works. But what I do know is um, by jumping and shooting an arrow, um, like this, this arrow, uh, or shooting the arrow, kind of interrupts the jump, does something with the speed, and as before, parrying... Um, kind of preserves that state, so you can't go up at a at a constant speed. So it's really... Um, I certainly don't have an input viewer, but if I had, you would see jump, bow, on this, basically on the same frame, and then parry as quickly as you can, and you keep it, uh, keep pressing it like that. Oh, cool. And that's how you fly in this game. Yeah. Why? Steps. Now, a uh, quick question there. So I see you have a bow, sure. uh, a bow counter there. And I know, I've know i noticed that some of these movement-based tricks are based, you know, you might use the bow and, like, cancel it. If for some reason, right. like, you were doing the trick and you ended up shooting, like, too many of your, you, you know, too many bow shots went out, um, yeah. you ran out of ammo, would you still be able to perform mm -hmm. this trick or no? Very interesting question. For the check from Super Slide, for example, the arrows don't matter. Okay. For this trick, however, the arrows do matter. If you don't have arrows, you cannot do flight. Okay. Which is interesting. Yeah. So that that kind of gives a hint as to how this works mechanically. There has to be something about specifically about shooting an arrow that makes this work. Got it. So very good question. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you for that. Mm -hmm. Of course. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, before we get to the applications of this glitch, and those I I can promise already those will be great. Um, a bit of history first, because speedrunners often get asked how how they find such crazy glitches in the first place, right? And in this particular instance, you can very nicely see how that often comes about. So it all... Um, I'll just keep flying for a bit while doing that. Um, it all started with a runner named Ancelado, who came into the community for the, for the um, 10k challenge. Um, and what they found was a very obscure version of flight where... Um, where they dashed into a piece of debris on the ground and they slowly floated upward for like a second or two before falling down again. So, not useful in the slightest, but um, it's, it's just weird game behavior, right? You're like, what, what is mm -hmm. going on here? And he, and uh, they played around with it for a bit and they realized that this weird, this floating state, which is basically the same which we are um, keeping going with the, with the parry here, that this state... Um, is preserved by parrying. So that was the first realization. If you get into the state and you parry then, you will fly. Um, so that's how the first version of flight was found. Right. Not that useful because it's only possible in one very specific spot where there's this weird debris on the ground. Um, but it was the first instance and looks not at all like what I showed you in terms of um, uh, what I showed you, but in terms of mechanic, um, or in terms of result, rather, sorry, that was the same. Now, one day later, I assume inspired by this rather situational debris fl flight thing, the runner um, named MTP posted a video where they flew upwards by jumping, then using a power-up, so not the bow like we did, but a mid-game power-up called Dimensional Claw, not important what that is, and using that combo and then parrying to keep the momentum, that's how they were able to fly. All right, so first there's this, this um, discovery, or this weird floating thing, or you can use it to fly, very situational, 
and then you play around with it more. Try to do some um, like combine other moves um, to like to to somehow replicate the state. Like just because just because you know something is possible in this game, at least I think or would argue, it makes it motivates you to try things um, to replicate that. So like. You you, you kind of know the goal already, and you have to figure out the steps to get there, which is easier than not knowing the goal goal at all and just trying random things. Um, so the the point I'm trying to make here is that not all, but many glitches start out with an observation, some weird game behavior, which in itself is not useful or situational, but sometimes after playing around with it for a bit. Um, it becomes more. Different versions are found, refined. And at the end of that whole process um, is this this thing, a full-fledged um, OG glitch, as you would say, <laughs> which um, has, not so, has not so much been discovered right away, but it's rather the result of many iterations of trial and error. And really, as was so aptly pointed out by uh, Carl Sagan42, this AGDQ, for those who've seen it, um, during the Mario Maker 2 glitch exhibition, um, that's really the process of science, right? No field of science is invented and mastered within a day, mm -hmm. but rather everything stands on the shoulders of giants, as is often said. There were people, discoveries, observations made before, which one builds on, and there are necessary steps in learning new things about anything, really. Which Very is true. why... Yeah, which I, I really like, um, not only the glitch itself, but how it came up about, because it um, it kind of gives a glimpse into the inner workings of speedrunning. Um, although th there are other ways glitches are found, just to, to make that clear. But for the sake of this showcase here, that's, that, that covers much of how speedrunning or glitch hunting works. Mm -hmm. A substantial part, at least. That's, that's it. Absolutely. No, that was um, that was an interesting little version there. Mm -hmm. Now to get back to the problem at hand, if you will, flying, um, flying kind of powerful. What can we do with it? Um, I was really quick because I see it in chat. I forgot to mention that, but I am indeed a scientist. I'm a um, quantum physicist by training, so... Oh, that's so cool. Um, I, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow. So that, that little, little monologue was uh, was kind of dear to my heart. Because um, oh, I think that's, it, so that's nice. just very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah. Right. Um, flight. So... Here... Like, this is the area for the first... Not the first, sorry. One of the bosses in the early-ish game, first third of the game, as um, soon as I touch the ground down there, the fight would trigger. Now what you can do, or at least try, again, this may take a few tries, please bear with me if it doesn't work right away. There. Didn't work, that's fine. At least now you'll believe me that there actually is a fight. If you go down there, the fight will start. Yes, confirm the fight, yes. That's all we were doing there. <laughs> Just had to, yes. We had to believe you. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Now, let's try that again. That looks good. Woo. Dash. And then we do the hover. Get to the end of the room, ideally. That looks good. And we're out. Wow. That's how we do it. Skip the boss. That's so cool. Wow. Yeah. And again, to reaffirm, the, the boss is still here. We would still play this one. So that was, I would argue, kind of obvious. There's a fight and you just fly over it. Yes. Um, but still very cool to look at. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Now instead, what if we look at a different boss? This is the Pit of Eternal Sands. This is where the challenge run where we race and Vin will be racing later on. Um, they'll be racing until this point. And this is where the, yeah, the, this race between them would end. Mm -hmm. Once you open this thing, or a bit earlier, but once you open this thing and fall down here, um, this is the boss fight playing um, against a big snake or something, snake form called Asa. 
and um, as it, oh, I got hit there. And this is kind of difficult. I'd rather I, this is not for me. My <laughs> people need me. Again, you don't know how to fight. We gotta go. We gotta get out of yeah, here. I'm peace. <laughs> Full pacifist runs are coming of this, it seems. Uh, basically, yeah. Um, I mean, that was kind of rude. We kind of left without saying anything. We should apologize. Um, no. No, it seems uh, like Astaha left. You must have really offended Astaha, yeah. Yeah. Which, uh, uh, to be, that makes sense. I wouldn't want to be stood up either. So that's <laughs> fair. I, I respect that. We could just not fight them and instead progress with, with the story. Now, if you remember this thing from the Sword Hero fight, the final fight in the tutorial, um, not only have we skipped the fight, but the game has internally marked this fight as completed because the fight was on and during that we exited the area. And it shows right here. Now we um, come back. I saw Sadwes. And suddenly there's this dialogue playing with Asta, who's not here anymore. Maybe he's on the phone, I don't know. Oh, sure, yeah, um, Bluetooth in the other ear, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> pretty pretty long range. <laughs> and and indeed, there's the power-up. Like, with the dash after the Jandor fight, here we could um, pick up the feather. Actually, let's do that right now. Thank you. You can just dash into this. Nice little optimization that's used in runs. Usually, you didn't see it because it didn't show you, but mm -hmm. because um, like usually if you approach this feather, there's this rather epic, honestly, anima uh, animation where he slowly trudges forward like against this strong wind and eventually grabs the feather. But we just went there right away with, uh, with something called an Aethera Surge, which is um, basically a special move you can do in this game. So that's kind of kind of funny all right yeah very neat wow yeah right and that's how you would skip this boss in the game just fly out once you're back in the game's like um you did it you're you're insane you're so good at fighting we'll give you this pass or so good at avoiding fighting <laughs> <laughs> probably yeah Cool. So, with that, those were some nice flight applications. Um, we'll see a bit more later on. But for now, maybe to um, to cool down a bit, something more lighthearted, like glitch, which, which isn't as big or consequential, but is kind of funny. And again, hoping you don't exile me for it, I'm cheating quickly to teleport myself down here. This area. Um, is part of the Sacred Archives, an area pretty early on to the game. You'll also see that in the race. And before getting up, uh, getting the power-up of this area, um, you have to do these little puzzles here. Um, here you see you have a... Have a um, have this, oops. Have these platforms that slide out of the wall, and you have to somehow make it up here. And there's a pretty cool puzzle and mechanic behind it. But we could just not do it, um, regardless of flight. Of course, now we could fly up here, but later the challenge runners cannot because there's no major glitches. But something with these buttons you can do, and I hope I get this because this is funny. Please look at this um, this platform right there, the one that's currently sticking off this one. Ah, uh, there we go. Whoa. Okay. One, go. that's two. <laughs> Just easing out. Three, one more, and I have it off screen. There we go. And it's gone. <laughs> wow. Thought it was going to break out of my monitor and hit me in the face. Yeah, that's a little uh, 3D in this yeah. 2D game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. You, you can also do it with the platform up there. Um, that's just a bit more precise, but that's the way you, or one possible way to skip this puzzle, to have this platform up there out at all times, and you can just skip whatever you have to do here. 
But I, I thought it was a cooldown. It's kind of kind of nice to see what it can what it can do in this game. Yes, yeah, very cool. <laughs> Cool. Now for the last big glitch we'll see today. Um, and I want to mention there are a lot more. There's, there's a, I think at this point, seven page document with like where glitches, skip tech, everything's documented, just listed. And that, what, two weeks into the game? So that's, um, that's an insane and great community effort, I think. Mm hmm. Now, right now, I have an amulet equipped called the King's Dragon amulet. You see, whenever you add a tree, you have these amulets um, can equip which have certain benefits, like increase the damage of arrows or uh, decrease environmental damage. And then there's this one, the ranking amulet, which basically gives you one retry. You're allowed to die once and you come back to life. What if we try to do something funny with it? Let's just... This, this uh, right here, I place a shadow. That's a shadow ability. You gain a third into the game. Um, basically, what I'm, what I can do here is I can return to my original position. It's kind of you, you save your position once. Now let's do this and bye. Uh. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> As you're seeing, not only am I invisible, but also invincible. I still exist. You can see my shadow right there behind the pillar, right? Mm -hmm. I'm still there. I just don't have a texture anymore, and nothing can harm me. This is my this is my safe space here. Wow. And what's interesting about this is that it happened to a number of casual players on boss fights. And that's because the mechanic is really simple. All you do is um, you place your shadow, you die, get revived by the Dragon King's amulet, and during that little revival animation, you just return to your shadow and manifest. And for some reason, that state of invulnerability you have while reviving, that's permanent. Um, you can get out of it. You can, for example, use the shadow again. We have a return here to the shadow. I exist again, and I'm live. I, there, I take damage again. That's called the zombie glitch. Um, zombie glitches are pretty well known in speedrunning. I would argue many games, or at least a handful of games, have them. Yeah. And and the idea in this case, and often that's the case, is that death of the main character is interrupted by an action. In this case, the action is returning to your shadow. Um, there are, interestingly, other ways to get into this state. And that is the last save I'll be loading, although I'll um, probably need the additional, what, 15 or 20 minutes? I don't know how long I have left. Yeah, about 20 minutes, a little less. 20 minutes, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. And for that other thing, let's go back to forest, to the Soma tree with the Kiana fight. Let's take some damage here deliberately. Uh, one more, that's good. So this time we'll start the fight. Um, we're not rude and said, say hello. Yes. Hi there, how are you doing Kiana? Also, I magically learned how to do combat in this game. Lucky for oh, me, because I yeah. kind of need it now. That was good. That was the, that was fast of you to learn. Yeah, well done. <laughs> Thank you. Again, this is a bit difficult, so it may take a few attempts. Or may get right away, we'll see. So I game over. It's not good. Maybe I haven't mastered combat yet. You just learned it, to be fair. Yeah. Okay. The game is kind of weird now. Yeah. Um, this. I think these should hit me. Yeah, they're supposed Something to. Something is a miss. Yeah. It's 
purple bombs as well. But nope, they're not. Nope. Nope, I think I did it. I think I'm in zombie state again. The side effect of this is you can see Sargon, that's good. But you cannot see much of the game anymore. This is it's not good. But what we can do now, now that we are invincible, and we can also fly, right? So we could just say, peace. I'm not doing this anymore. Just peacing out here real quick. And kind of see, but yes. Exiting the area by just flying over the wall. Flight. And this is where we get the power up after um, after the fight here. So yeah, that's the slow walking I was talking about. So with this version of uh, the zombie glitch, unlike the previous one where you turn invisible with the amulet, this one persists through saves. So if I would load another save right now, I would still be invincible and all the, or most of the texture would be gone. So the only way to fix this is to restart the game. Then again, why, why would you even want to fix this? It's, it's kind of cool. Let's play mm -hmm. with it for a bit. And this again. And one more. And then we can properly exit the area. Oops. Now you might argue, well, there, there are vines on the left. You can just climb up those vines. Sadly, um, these are not interactable. It's one of the drawbacks of the zombie glitch in this game. Vines and swing poles are... They just don't exist anymore. Texture does, but the collision doesn't. So we have to fly out. Um, I think that's fine, though. Seems to be going fine anyway, yeah? Right. Okay, now the, the reason I, I keep going right now is that I want to show um, how useful this glitch is. Really, this glitch, the zombie glitch, together with flight, um, those are the backbone of the burnt any percent category. For, if you're familiar with Metroidvanias, for quite an obvious reason, if we were to go to the end boss right now, regardless of whether we can or not, but let's just assume we could, um, there's no way we could win. Um, because we're Imperial. chronically underleveled. We don't have any items, we have nothing. So unsurprisingly, we would just die. With this glitch, however, because we're invincible, um, well, really, we, we don't die, because we can't die. We just finish the game. Okay. Or could anyway. Um, oh, that's fine, I can just fly up again. Okay, so here also you see spikes. Don't hit me. No, um, not do nothing. Scraps right there. Usually one hit KO, nothing. Not their job. Slow. Yeah, that, that's actually a good, um, good point. There are different versions of flight in terms of speed. That depends on when you um, do the parry action. The quicker you do it, the faster you go. So they're flying up, flying up, flying up. Peace. It's impressive how well you know where you're actually going, considering you cannot see anything, really. Right, yeah. That actually... Um, as you may imagine, it takes a while to get here still. For sure. Um, the one way to do it is to just play the game, either normally 100% or whatever, or just play this part of the route, but where you can see stuff. Mm -hmm. um, make yourself invisible via cheat ending or whatever. And eventually you'll learn where everything is. And then this is what we're doing. We're zooming here, we're doing a bit of flying. You know, as you do, 
on a Saturday. Sure. <laughs> Now there's one, there's another small disadvantage or downside to the to the flight glitch, and not flight, sorry, to the zombie glitch, and it's that the chakram here, which you fly and use to solve puzzles. If we were to re retrieve that right now, and I will in a second because I have to, um, something funny will happen, and there we go. Oh, <laughs> uh, you're just being sawed in half endlessly. Yeah. Yeah, that little Yu-Gi-Oh! fusion card here. But you can still use it to activate other platforms, so that's it's not a big deal. Don't worry that that thing was perpendicular, it's fine. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Okay, we can do a little more flight. Great scenery also, beautiful yeah. backgrounds. Yeah, the art is beautiful in this game. I wish we could see yeah. all of it sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we might just in like half an hour from now. Yes, we. I think we will. I think we will. <laughs> <laughs> Try to take a bit. This is a certain setup to avoid all the collision. Because although I know where everything is, in theory, in practice, it's still hard to navigate. If it doesn't work right away, I can still cheat like a bit. Um, up here, and then... Made it here, cool. In a run, this would look a lot smoother, but for now, that's good enough. Looks plenty smooth Do to we... me, I don't know. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. Um, so right now, we're in the upper city, which is where the whole end of the game is. Um... Certainly, this is this would be the way to the final boss. That's the skate. We'll get to in a second. I don't know why I'm fighting. Not only do I not know how to fight, I can also just face behind the wall. Why a cheat engine? Thank you. So just to be clear, whenever I'm teleporting like that, I am using cheat engine to manip manipulate my position. There's no glitch or anything going on. I'm I'm just cheating, like right on. This gate right here, I forgot to mention, this gate, um, behind that gate is the final boss. And the reason we cannot just fly behind that gate is because it's in a dimension we can't access. So we actually need the story item, which is the key, the king's key or Darius key, how it's called. Um, we would need that to get to the end. We have to get the key first. And also, I, I think that it's a nice end to this um, glitch showcase, just to play the game for like 10 minutes mm -hmm. um, and to see how an any percent run would look. Or rather not look, because you can't see anything. Yeah, yeah, it looks like it, yeah, it looks like beautiful background art and us <laughs> dashing through the air. But it is, it's incredible. I cannot believe how much has been found in such a short amount of time. Absolutely. As I said, it's a, it's a crazy community effort. Mm -hmm. And uh, so many people have contributed to this. Absolutely, yeah. And, yeah, and to reiterate, we are two weeks into um, the game's discovery. So, like, two papers down the line, two discoveries down the line, um, there might be something even crazier. We we can't know. Yeah, I think Who that's knows? It's yeah. also, yeah. It's also like the beauty of speedrunning, right? You never know what's what down the line. Hey, what's down the line? platform right now that doesn't work. Uh, there's a puzzle here. No point really in doing it. I'll just teleport through. Nothing too interesting going on. So just to give you an idea, in this room, um, first of all, that's where the fourth celestial is. If you remember this shooting your arrow into the sky thing, um, we did that after the Astaha fight, mm -hmm. quote unquote. Um, that's part of your story, the story. You have to do that four times and more story unfolds stuff. Um, there actually is a way to get to the second to last boss through this, which I will not show, but instead get to the door. Falling infinitely, that's fine. It's another... Actually, a good point. That's another interesting use of the zombie glitch, 
is that oh i think i broke it no mm. didn't i don't know where i am <laughs> that's weird i'm falling infinitely oh the cheat engine says i'm stuck in place i'm not actually falling just looks like it oh okay frankly i may have broke everything <laughs> Oh, there you go. That looks like actual falling, at least in the background. No, yeah, no, no, I'm falling again. I'm falling. Yeah. I think I'm in bounds. Yes, that's the door. Usually, that's where you're stuck. There's a door behind which, again, if I do a little whoop, this is how you'd get to the um, second to last boss of the game, which you'd fight here. And I, I think... Um, this is the last thing I'll do. Oops, sorry, there's no sound. Just cut out. Go. Um, so just to give you an idea, how does fighting look if you have no amulets, no health, nothing, but you're invincible? Um, like this, you can just hammer away. Which, if you played the game and you know how difficult the Darius fight is, and, and it is, after all, second to last boss, um, sure. it's quite satisfying to just have a go at him. <laughs> it's a way of Just revenge. Beat up I on think. Him. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> revenge. <laughs> what a cool Made design for a boss, hell. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um similarly the actual final boss of the game, which you'll also see later. Um very cool, has some very epic attack moves and all that. Um that's the third phase. Yeah, I think the, the bosses are very well designed in this game, also in terms of difficulty. Um, because I, I made it sound like this boss is, boss is impossible, which it's not, it's just difficult. But at this point, we're also supposed to have many more powers with. Like, we're supposed to have dash, the double jump. Um, we can, in some sense, fly through air. We have a kind of claw, and there would be opportunities to platform here. So fighting, as, you, as I said, you'll see later, looks very cool and is very, very fun to do. Yeah. Wow. And I think with that, I know I'm five minutes early, but I think this gave a good, gave you guys a good idea of how, um, of what we did in this game so far. Let's just, let's just put it like that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that was, oh, wow. I mean, I, I already said it, but I'm going to say it again. What a monumental effort it must have been for everybody in the Prince of Persia community or the Lost Crown community specifically to find so much in this game in such a small amount of time. I mean, less than two weeks the game has been um, yeah. has been out. So it's just, wow, incredible. So just well done. And then like the execution of everything you showed was like really, really right on. Well done, Toka. That was, thank you. Thank what, a, thank what, you a, so what a visual spectacle that was. Right, thank you. Um, I guess I'll end it with... The, the tiniest little thing, mm -hmm. um, you can fly not only with the bow, but also with the shadow power, um, right, as I mentioned. So even if you're out of arrows, right now I'm out of arrows, I can't fly with the bow. But as soon as we get the, um, sorry, not shadow, the dimensional claw, it's called, mm -hmm. um, as soon as we have that, we can just fly with that. So I just want to point that, out, point that out specifically. There are more versions um, of how flight does work in this game. Which I think is kind of funny in itself. Yes, wow. That is so neat. Cool. Um, yeah, that really, that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. Um, hope you had a great time. I'm sure you had Conception. Oh, uh, I thanks absolutely Thanks again for did. being with me. Yeah, this, this was yeah, this was just incredible. It was so so cool. Um, if you uh, if you'd like, if you have any like shout outs or anything you'd like to say before uh, we start getting set up for the next section, uh, feel free. Right. Yeah. So in that case, um, I kind of said it already partially, but shout outs to everybody who contributed to this game um, so far. The this is ten thousand dollar challenge, right? Sponsored by Ubisoft it's on speedrun.com, through which. A lot of great people have joined the community and have, I have to say it that way, have broken the game in half already. Mm -hmm. And also the, the little history excerpt that I read um, goes to show how much 
of a community effort this really is. Somebody finds something, somebody else expands on that, and at the end, really, you do this. And that's all, um, that's all I want to say for now. But I hope you guys stay tuned for what's next, the interview with the developers? Yes, yeah, absolutely. So uh, while uh, we're, we're going to get set up for next sections and stuff like that, but uh, thank you so much again, Toka, for, for being here and showcasing that. Incredible. Well done. Um, while we're going to get ready for the next, uh, we're going to be going into an interview uh, with the, uh, the some of the developers, some people who worked on Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. We're actually going to take another look at uh, The Lost Crown uh, coming up here, um, and then we will see you uh, just after this. Hello, everyone. My name is Conception, and I am very honored here to be uh, sitting down with two people who are involved directly with the development of the Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. First, we have uh, Antoine Fouquet, who is uh, one of the junior QA testers of the game, as well as Erwan Cochon, who is one of the level designers in the game. Uh, hello to both of you. How are you both doing today? <laughs> Hi, super fun. Thanks for the invitation. Hello. Yeah, I'm doing fine. <laughs> for, let's let's get started because we have a lot to discuss with such an impactful and cool game. So uh, let's start with Erwan here. So could you tell us a little bit about the Prince of Persia: The Lost Crown and what the game brings? Yes, of course. If you never see the video of the trailer, um, so Prince of Persia: The Lost Crown is about Sargon, uh, a young gifted warriors. He's part of the Immortals, a group of warriors. They all have their own abilities, their own specialties. And they have to save the Prince Asan, sorry, that have been kidnapped. And so you can enjoy this adventure in an action and platforming game where everything is possible. I mean, that sounds very cool. And you, you, you uh, talked about it right at the top, the trailer, which I have seen, I've watched quite a few times now, especially in preparation <laughs> for this uh, this very fun event that we have going. It's such a cool trailer. So uh, definitely check that out if you're interested. And if you're already watching this, you've probably already seen some gameplay and it's probably been uh, pretty exciting for you. For Antonin, for example, we've seen other uh, Ubisoft titles such as the Assassin's Creed series, for example, uh, that has a lot of like, historical inspiration and mythology, uh, which uh, in my opinion at least are really great tools in telling a good story. So in this game, in The Lost Crown, can we expect to see some mythological influences? Yeah, yeah. It won't be like uh, an historical uh, historical game such as an, uh, an Assassin's Creed, but like uh, you can definitely expect some, some Persian mythology. Uh, it was uh, actually a, a, a real challenge and a, 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 a real will from the team to to respect and to be true to this mythology. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. I, from the little bits that I've seen, you can very clearly tell about the kind of care and passion that kind of went into not only obviously creating a memorable video game experience, but also to make it as uh, mythological and as accurate as possible. Obviously, with myth, you never know what is true or what isn't true necessarily, but uh you know there is a lot of reference in there and i think that it just makes a game like this so so cool erwan so the the lost crown is described as a 2.5 dimension side scrolling adventure platform platformer rather which is uh, a little bit different might be a little bit different compared to other more uh somewhat famous titles of the prince of persia series such as sands of time warrior within so could you talk to us a little bit as the level does one of the level designers of the game obviously not doing it entirely by yourself <laughs> uh but as one of the designers of the game could you talk a little bit about uh, the differences and advantages to working in a 2.5 dimension space as opposed to a three-dimensional space or a purely two-dimensional space. Um, in my opinion, in uh, 3D games like the, the precedent uh, ones, what is cool is in the level design, you can put elements and ask the player to look around him and uh, try to evolve with that information that he can get. In a 2.5D game, the character is easy to handle. So with all the inputs and the, the abilities that you have, you can evolve easier, I think, because we only ask in the challenges to be precise on your movements. Um, and also in this game, we uh, bring our expertise on platforming games. That was also a, a cool, uh, a really cool things to, on my side, learn from uh, uh, my colleague and also to, to put my, my own uh, uh, vision of uh, platforming uh, into the 5D. And what was also cool is to bring this 3D dimension in all the cinematics and add a really powerful uh, stylish movement, for example, when you combat, and also on all the cinematics. Yeah, 
yeah that yeah that is uh one of the really cool blends that I, i'm finding the, the little bits i've seen of the game so far uh the blending of this 2.5d space into you know as it kind of works between the two dimensions it, it's, it's very seamless it's very clean looking it's very polished and it's really really cool looking so well done to the to those who designed not only the cinematics but the levels themselves and the the polish that went into it you know this is this is the games done quick channel this is obviously something that revolves a little bit around speed running video games which i know and i've heard through the grapevine that we have some speed running knowledge among the two of you here so uh starting uh at least with antonin uh knowing that you have this background a little bit in speed running how did that influence your approach to uh your position uh within the game which is to qa test the game i think first that in my opinion speed running and qa testing have quite a lot of uh, similarities like sure. the main difference is like <laughs> when i find a bug i first think uh, how can i fix it and then <laughs> how to exploit it but <laughs> like <yeah. laughs> but um i started like applying my speedrun knowledge uh, very early in the development to to do like sanity checks we have to we have to run through the game from a to z like uh, and i had to do it uh, maybe twice or thrice a week so planning my routes i was trying to, to find some skips and it helped me a lot because with this mentality i, I was able to find uh, to find a lot of uh, different bugs uh, that i wouldn't find uh, that i wouldn't have found uh, otherwise uh, i also like try to, to take inspirations from other games speedrun like to see in which way they would they would uh, like break the game uh, to to see if uh, I can I could uh, test this kind of things on on our game can also be like uh, an issue at times because I, as a as a QA tester like I have to to test every possibility to test uh, a lot of things and that means sometimes playing slower playing making mistakes dying and like if I'm not focused enough sometimes I can get carried and miss some some issues so like. It's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a balance. All the speedrunners who may be watching this uh, can sympathize a lot with, you know, focusing on something and, you know, can completely uh, forget that maybe, you know, they missed that trick, they missed that jump when they're thinking about something else uh, and preoccupied. Uh, so I think we can have a lot of people in the audience who, who relate with something like that. Antonin, obviously, mess, uh, talking about uh, speedrunning the game kind of as part of the QA testing. Antonin, you also have the internal record as a right yeah. <laughs> for the game's completion. Now, what is that time? You have to brag a little bit, right? Uh, it's going to be beaten very quickly, I think, when the game <laughs> releases, but <laughs> I'm currently at 1 hour 43, but like wow. uh, it can be improved a lot. <laughs> But sure, like we... sure. At the time of recording, though, that is a world record. So let's let's not yeah. downplay that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Very, very cool. Um, so, Erwan, for you, uh, when, when it comes to speedrunning, and obviously, of course, when it comes to video gaming in general, uh, accessibility is becoming more and more important um, as we have people of all breaths uh, coming to play games. Uh, and Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, was developed with uh, more accessibility in mind. So can you elaborate a little bit on how that was approached from a development perspective and what uh, accessibility features are part of the game? I can explain what the team do because first of all, I don't work on this uh, accessibility side, but they did an amazing sure. job and it was really cool to see during the development what they decided to do. Uh, the main goal was to do an accessible uh, game by design all the, the features and the mechanics were designed to be accessible when you the first time you take them in hand. As every player experiences a, a game differently, they do a lot of uh, small stuff, like in the controls and the camera. Uh, that player won't see it, but they did, they did a, a, a job like on it. The exploration side of the game, uh, they had a guided mode. And this one is cool because on all those adventure game, adventure platforming game, uh, you have to uh, visually memorize it. And before you, in all uh, other games, you are not able to keep a picture of it. So they add a memory shot, so you can take screenshot, in, uh, screenshot, sorry, inside the game uh, to visually see it on the map. And this was this decision was uh, uh, amazing for me because I really want it on other games and they decided to put it that I was okay thank you uh, players will enjoy it and also on this map uh, we guide the player for, on the next uh, 
the next uh, quest and the next event. Uh, so if you just want to enjoy it and don't be lost on the map, you you can uh, sorry you can put on this mod. Um, there is also a lot of assists and combats and platform and platforming, and all the stuff are. Uh, atomic parameters that you can tweak in the menu. So for the speed of enemies, sp speed of uh, everything, you can tweak it and s for your experience. That's it's it's so cool and and partially refreshing though. It seems like gaming is finally moving towards a landscape of considering accessibility more and more uh, as development occurs. But it's so nice to hear that the, these are at the forefront uh, of thought when it comes to the development process in modern games. So it's really, really cool to hear. Uh, this is going to be a question for both of you, but we're going to start with Antonin first. Um, so for, uh, for Antonin to start, what was your favorite part of the game from a development perspective? And if it's different, as since you both have played uh, the game, and what is your favorite part to play? It is different. Uh... In fact, uh, yeah, from a developer's perspe uh, perspective, I really, I really loved working on the sacred archives, which are like uh, because they, it's like a huge, uh, huge library with uh, ancient knowledge and uh, and secret magic of time, and it's like. Uh, I, first, I really loved this magic, alchemic, mysterious kind of vibe. Working on it was a real pleasure because, like, uh, it's it uh, it's it's been through a lot of iterations of changes. It's, it changed a lot, and it has a lot of uh, very specific uh, mechanics uh, and puzzles and enemies. Every day, I had to adapt to to the levels that changed, and it was feeling like the alchemists that are in these archives that are <laughs> losing their mind in, in, a, in an ever-changing ma maze, sorry. But like, it was such a, such a pleasure. Uh, I learned a lot uh, how to test uh, and break uh, the, the, the time puzzle that they are, uh, all these things. It's, uh, it's very, it was a very fun experience. And for from a player's perspective, I think that it's the pit of eternal sands. It's like a, an, an old, the old city under the sands, cursed, uh, trapped in time. From a player uh, perspective, because uh, f for me at least, it felt so the travel, so the platforming felt so smooth and so natural. And like there, there are some little twists that uh, you evolve through space. And like the the, the bus, the the big bus uh, at the at the end is a huge climax. Maybe my my favorite bus bus also. So like uh, yeah, it's my favorite part to play. <laughs> Yeah, nothing feels better than nice, clean movement as you go through a, a platforming space. Oh, yeah, that speaks to my yeah. heart. Uh, Erwin, what about you? Uh, and a favorite part to work on, and if different, favorite part to play. I can first confirm that Antonin bro broke a lot my Maria Sacred <laughs> Archives, because yes, I work on it. And that's my answer. I really love to, to level design on this one, because uh, there were a lot of stuff to do. It's a uh, middle part of the game that, where you come back and there's a lot of stuff to do. And all the gameplay elements we designed for this area with my colleagues. And it was a new way to evolve in levels. So it was quite fun to put all these elements together and see how Tana broke them. But also during playtest, I learned a lot uh, to, to evolve this area and make it uh, like a maze. So players will need to, to find their path uh, inside it. That's exciting. I'm very excited to see the paths that uh, gamers and maybe even speedrunners can uh, come up with to get through that maze. I think that's going to be pretty exciting. <laughs> stuff. Um, so uh, we kind of teased it a little bit already, but both of you have at least a little bit of experience in the speedrunning realm. So I wanted to uh, talk to you both a little bit. We'll start with Erwan this time. Uh, how did you get into speedrunning and what was the first game you either saw or tried to uh, run yourself? The first moment I started speedrunning was on Counter Strike, and in the surf mode. I don't know, guys, if you know that mode. So I was thinking to answer this: uh, what was my first moment on speedrunning? And I think by mastering this, those movements and finish the the, the puzzles and all the the environment, I think it was my first time on speedrunning. And my real speedrun that I really want to try hard and also. Uh, try to beat records, but it's impossible. I'm so about that. It wasn't a uh, super mid boy. Yeah, to have uh, all those precise moments, uh, like in Celeste, uh, a beautiful one to see on speedrun. You 
can't make mistakes, you just have to be precise at the precise timing, and I love seeing players beat those records. Oh yeah, those precision platformers are so much fun when it comes to watching a speedrun. But you are not wrong in saying how difficult <laughs> and how uh, how precise you have to be at all times. So I, I do understand the uh, the trepidation going into learning a run of that nature. Uh, Anton, and how about you? Um, how did you get into speedrunning? Uh, what was the game that you uh, started started with, or just saw and, and found some interest in? Uh, I started as a spectator, as a, a lot of people, I think, but mm -hmm. uh, I started watching like uh, Doom and Paul Little Speedruns <laughs> because mm -hmm. they, was, they were mesmerizing for me. I was like so, so inspired by how people would like collaborate to break this game, to push it to its limits. And it was so, so fun to watch and that it's in part what inspired me to, to go into QA testing because uh, I wanted to do this to, to to break games also uh, sure. and to push them to their limits i started speedrunning like uh, my first game was on hollow knight my favorite game ever and like mm -hmm. uh i wanted to stay in this beautiful uh, world i wanted to to push my mastery uh, to where i could uh, and so i started uh, i started training a little uh, Obviously, I don't have uh, the the level of the amazing people who who do the world records, but like uh, I followed closely all the breakthroughs, all the the discoveries. Like I was pulling my hair when they discovered like the the two two levers loading uh, strategies and all these things. <laughs> like, I'm very admi uh, admirative of the the whole night and Metroidvania speedrun community in general. All speedrun communities are like fascinating to to see. <laughs> Yes, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the the two kind of environments both of you picked, the Precision Platformer and Metroidvania, are two of the most popular uh, in terms of speedrunning, and I think that's for a reason. And <laughs> both of you kind of touched upon the pros and, and excitement that comes with both. So I think that's really, really cool that you you kind of glommed onto those two fields. Um, for both of you as well, and we'll start with Antonin this time, uh, did your perspective or enjoyment of speedrunning change after you have gone through the development process of The Lost Crown? Since I work in the video game industry, my my perspective has changed a lot, almost everything, because now when I play a game, like I'm really trying to analyze it, but as I'm a tester, I want also want to, to break it, to to diverge from the path it's uh, taking me to. So uh, it's still pretty fun and I, I, I found a lot of fun, but like it has changed my approach a lot. But in the meantime, it, it has like made me more admirative and uh, understanding for the games and the, 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 the people that make them. Because like now that I'm the in the other side, I, I can see that all the constraints, all the all the things you have to do to 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 make this game happen, and like uh, I understand now that games can be can can be perfect, and like it's in those cracks that like people like speedrunner can express themselves. So it, yeah, <laughs> that's how I see it now. Yeah, yeah. What a what a what a incredible perspective to have from somebody on a, on the development side of things. Uh, Erwan, how about yourself? Uh, did your perspective or enjoyment of speedrunning change as a part of the Lost Crown's development process? It, it changed a lot because, uh, as I said before, uh, I was already a bit fan of uh, speedrun and when I played it, but uh, it passed by during my studies. I completely stopped uh, looking at uh, speedrunning lives and uh, records. I was always thinking how I can give uh, tools to players to try to uh, evolve faster in the game without knowing the mechanics to find secret moves. Um, and do, during this production, um, I really love to try to pick what players will do uh, when the game will be released because I, don't, I think we don't know half percent of things that they will find to, to evolve. So yeah, it changed a lot in that way. Wow, yeah, that that is also really really cool to hear. Um, well, it's been it's been an excellent conversation with both of you. Uh, before we head out and kind of close out the interview here, uh, do you either of you have any shout outs or acknowledgements that you'd like to make, uh, whether it be for people on your team or <laughs> people at home, whatever you'd like to do? And we'll start with uh, with Erwan for that one. Well, first, thanks a lot for this invitation. It was really cool to speak about that kind of. Not that huge kind, of, that huge part of games because now in all of different games you can uh, find speedrun like in Tetris, 
they just recently beat the game, so it's not a speedrun, but I, I wanted to talk about it. And so thanks cool. to the team, because we are... I, uh, all the team of Prince of Persia the last one are proud about what they do in each kind and each part of the game. So I want to thank them. Thanks them, sorry, for this adventure during four years. And I can't wait to see what you will do, uh, guys, on this game. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're all very, very excited as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Anton, how about you? Any acknowledgements you'd like to make? Yeah, also wanted to, to thank uh, all the people who take the time to, to play games and to, to speedrun them, to, to, to learn about them. It's so it's so cool. And yeah, also a huge shout out to our team. It was it has been my my best game dev experience and it was we it was a, a, a really fun and fun experience. I think everyone was so passionate and talented like uh, I thank thank you to, to everyone. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that, that is just lovely. Uh, for everybody out there, I'd like to remind you that the Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown is available now. Uh, it is available on PC as well as Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, and even the Amazon Luna. So please get out there and enjoy what is, I'm sure, to be an incredible, incredible release. So uh, I wanted, and I also wanted to take the time to thank both Antonin and Erwan for joining me today. And uh, yeah, we will see you out there. Enjoy Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. Welcome back, everyone, to this very special GDQ Hotfix episode where we are featuring Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, in its extraordinary community so far, its burgeoning speedrun community, of which has found countless amounts of uh, tech and uh, skips and glitches, and they're just so, so passionate. I'm very happy that uh, Ubisoft gave us the opportunity to kind of feature them uh, a little bit more, uh, especially in relation to this brand new exciting game. Uh, what we are about to see is going to be a race, and the uh, the conditions of the race are quite special because they are uh, related to a challenge that is currently live on speedrun.com, but I'm going to let uh, the commentators and the runners take care of that information. Uh, we're going to go ahead and throw it right on over there. We have Prince of Persia, The Lost Crowns. This is going to be a race, and it is going to be of uh, from the beginning of the game to what we're calling the Sands Pit Challenge. And the runners are going to be 7 Racer 7 and Veneve. So everyone, feel free to take it away. Hi, everyone. Hello, I'm 7 Racer 7. I'm Veneve. And uh, welcome to this challenge. So the idea of the challenge is, well, to gain money on speedrun.com by being in top 10, obviously. But uh, it's to be able to go to around 40% of the game as fast as possible. And uh, that's what uh, we will do right now. Uh, there is uh, a bunch of rules that got added for accessibility and to allow more people to participate, be it, on, uh, be it people on console or people who cannot do heavy movement tech that are mashing like Toka showed earlier, like in the glitch exhibition. So right now we will not be able to slide cancelling. There is some stuff that we will also not be able to do. But overall, this is still going to uh, show you what the game looks like speedrunning wise and how cool it is. You could still move pretty fast without that, with the dashing, so... All right. Uh, then we have to do also like uh, the game. This game has multiple uh, difficulty. As you can see on my screen right now, there is Rookie, Warrior, Hero, or Immortal. There is also a custom category. We have to pick one of the four presets, and obviously we will run on Rookie, which is like the easiest and the fastest. We're bad at the game, so. <laughs> yeah, also. <laughs> yeah, first time through, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. definitely. <laughs> right. Uh, do you want to have you to rebound your controls already? Do you uh, want to create the? I don't rebind anything. Mine are you fine. Don't? Yeah, mine are fine. Okay, cool. I rebind them, them with my keyboard <laughs> itself. I was just so expecting I don't need it. to do that. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, do you want me to do the countdown then? Yeah. Sure. We're all set to go. Okay. Runners, start your engines in three, <laughs> two, one, go. All right. Good luck, Vin. You too. Except not, because I want to win. I was, I was, I was <laughs> going to say, you're saying good luck now. That was That's a different tone to what was being said earlier. <laughs> I mean, yeah, true. <laughs> 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 All right. 
so you see me uh, sliding and kicking and cancelling that kick with a slide. Uh, this is the fastest movement we can do so far, like in the game. You can also run and up. Flip. Uh, oh, why did I get my die? And no, oh, no, we are like one in tutorial. I think you didn't watch my glitch exhibition. You can just skip that, right? You can just like wall jump over the wall <laughs> infinitely. I don't know why you're doing this. Yeah, but Toka, see, there is a difference between you and me. I'm not good like you. Ah, but, no, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> that's why, like, in every leaderboard we are together, you're always in front of me, except you cheating. <laughs> right, yeah. Why do we more serious? That's, um, like, the, the whole idea of the speedrunning challenge here was to be at least loosely. NMG, um, given the short time span, it's kind of hard to define all of that. But one of the things that's not allowed for the challenge is this infinite wall jump I showed off, like before you get the dash. So that's why um, both of them did the did the fight there. To be fair, these skips um, I showed here in early game save like five to ten seconds each. So it's it's not a big deal. It's really mostly about movement and execution here. Um, that's where the main time save comes from for them. I was trying uh, to fix my audio because I don't have audio, but hopefully it's just on my end. <laughs> oh, so the part we just I just finished is uh, a little bit random, like you are held by your fellow immortals. Immortals are like warrior, like the seven top warrior, like in the in all Persia. I really don't understand that section. <laughs> yeah, it, it's really tough to optimize. You'll, you'll see me uh, jumping for most load zones that I go through, and that's because uh, you keep running if you jump into it. If you just run into it, then you have to slide again to start your run. I think something that's quite interesting um, that I think someone realized recently was that uh, obviously they're playing on Rookie right now, which is like the preset difficulty, but you can actually make the enemies do even less damage than on Rookie. But interestingly, the, the, when you're doing that section there where your fellow immortals are helping you out, their damage is also defined by that number. So if you take the number down to 0 0.1, your fellow immortals are clearly not the best warriors in Persia because they take like a million hits to kill the AI because they, they share the same sort of damage numbers, which is quite funny. I did not know that. Oh. Ah, that's bad. Okay. Oh, I'm currently like on the first boss of the game. We have to kick him out of his horse. And then if I do things correctly, no, I did not. Like, if you jump at the correct height, it cannot hit you, like, right here. It's okay. And we can skip cutscene with the B button on controller, which is good. Weird thing about entering this boss is you can you can do the charged attack from, like, as soon as you enter that previous room. It just won't actually trigger until you get close to the door. Really weird. So, I don't want to talk too much about the story because uh, I enjoy the story and I want people to enjoy it as well. So there is going to be spoiler, obviously, but uh, even like if you get spoiled a little bit, you will still be able like to enjoy it after. So, because there is a lot, lot of things that we won't see. So here we are discovering the Alpha Third. If someone can pronounce it correctly, please. <laughs> because oh, I cannot. That's, that's good. That's good. After search, <laughs> for sure. Fine. Yeah. So, yeah. Every time I parry, we parry or attack, there is our gauge that fills up on the bottom right of the screen. Also, we can just infinite that guy. So, yeah, that gauge like kind of builds up and then you can use super so, attack. Thanks to that. Essentially only and use this it is for bosses, be... except for that yeah. time, because it's forced. And we also use it on uh, to catch some feathers sometimes, because it's faster than working slowly. If you do not know what feathers are, uh, because you weren't there earlier, it's okay, you will soon see. So 
so we are still progressing. Like we kind of finish what the game is it tends to be the tutorial, but in my opinion, the tutorial goes until the Manticore that Toka showed earlier, which is like the first real boss of the game, let's be honest. Well you say show, but really I went there and bailed because it really that is difficult for me. Yeah, so the, <laughs> only in this run will you see how to actually fight that boss and all bosses for that matter, really. Hopefully. Yeah, pretty much Alex, the only one that's going to be probably, uh, and I guess like alternate Sargons. Right, yeah, I guess in terms of main bosses, not mini bosses, that's fair. But we will still see at least one alternate Sargon and hopefully two if I don't forget later. Alright, up here we are introduced to the map of the game and also one of the best features the developer made, which is uh, the memory uh, shard, which allows you to take a screenshot and that screenshot is on the map so that, you know, like in a Metroidvania, you often get stuck somewhere. And thanks to that, you can just remember why you were stuck instead of having to spend a lot of time by going there. This is that's actually a really cool feature. Yeah, that's an amazing one. I no longer have to take screenshots with my phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, actually, it's, it's crazy that it, it's like it, it feels like it's like a, such a like it's such an intuitive thing and amazing thing. It's, it's actually crazy that it's taken Metroidvania this long to, to actually come up with it. But like yeah. it's it's super in, yeah. it's super innovative because uh, <laughs> it is as far as I'm aware, literally the first uh, Metroidvania to, to use that feature, and it is just so helpful. Yeah, that's yeah, true. So here, I'm gonna, items here. Yeah. I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna talk to that lady. Normally, Vin won't do it. But since I want to continue the run after the challenge uh, and end to showcase like the rest of the run, I actually need to pick up some stuff on the road, which is gonna pretty much like make me lose like a minute, but it will be fine because uh, thanks to that, I will have faster boss fight. So I picked up one amulet that will give me an extra HP. And now I'm gonna pick up this one, which says that when I have full HP, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm doing more damage. But I have to equip them. Right now I do not have them. But you will save you me to equip them just uh, after. You need to be at a walk walk tree to equip them? Yeah. Uh, okay, that was uh, awkward. So yeah, to skip this uh, shopkeeper here, I'm just gonna like keep attacking in the air, and I kind of let you like float downwards. Just need a couple. Yeah, for those who watched nice. the glitch exhibition, that's precisely the short hover that I showed. It's really just that um, certain attacks that make you hover in the air and you can float over the cuts and trigger. You can also do a down attack like I just did there, which is really helpful if you need to go yeah. down really fast. And we'll use it again, the sword attacking, which we call it sword hovering, um, in the forest again to take a slightly faster route. Something that Arrays just did there. The uh, undead prisoner was about to do like a like a super powerful move that you have to parry. Um, but if you parry that move, it actually takes quite a long time to watch the animation play out and doesn't doesn't actually do that much damage. So what you can do is use the Athra Surge to uh, basically get the undead prisoner out of that animation and, and, and finish the fight a little bit faster, which is quite nice. Yeah. We do it anyway because it just speeds it up, but we kind of wait to see if the boss does that move. Yeah. Like you just did right now. Oh, no. Oh, I accidentally parried it. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. That's a, I mean, you didn't accidentally did it. What you did is you were showing everyone uh, just how yeah, that's what we said, little damage the, the animation does uh, compared to the Athra Surge. Hopefully it doesn't do it again. <laughs> yeah, I've scored a little fact here about the yellow attack from the net prisoner. If he triggers that or is in the middle of doing it and you touch a door, like get within, I think, two distance units within a door, he will stop immediately. Um, that's, I think that's one of the measures 
they put there to prevent um, clipping from being easy, like clipping out of the room. I'm learning. Obviously, the after new things. better. Yeah. Oh, oh, just swallowed over. The razor here. just hit the skip. Cool. Yeah. So I'm skipping a mini boss. Right, that also skips a boss. I forgot about that. Oops. Classic instance of trust us, there would be a boss. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But literally, Prince of Persia speedrunner in the right way. Trust me, there yes. is a cutscene. Trust me, there is a boss. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, now I got my bow. So will they start to fly now? Ah, it doesn't seem like it. Yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, just contact meta on speedrun.com to ask him to say it's okay to fly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that'd be a great idea with two days left in the right. challenge. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't cause any problems. Those birds are annoying. I just wanted to see that. And I, I suppose that is a I that is something to, to, I guess, talk about in regards to the 10k challenge is that it is still active right now. Um, and I think it will be for a, a day and a half or two days even. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if you see this and you really like the way that it looks and right. you also like getting $10,000... Um, well, the max you can get is 5000 That's the Well, sorry, yeah. So the, in, in, if you like getting money, um, which, you know, most people do like getting money, uh, then you can try it out for yourself and see how fast you can go. Okay. Now I have the bow as well. Like my movement is a little bit awkward, but it's fine. I do not like this section at all, so I was playing yeah, it safe. it's kind of uh, frustrating, especially yeah. that enemy and the boss. Right, so now my bow can be transformed into a chakra. And with that, we can open doors. Oh, come on. I do remember really early on when I was trying to like root the game and I got really excited that we could skip the Chakram because uh, <laughs> you can actually like you can go back to the lower city without without getting it. Yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, you will end up with a, a a place where you can no longer continue. Essentially. Yeah, you kind of <laughs> so, need it later. Yeah, I got really excited and then got to the area and I was same, like, same. oh, <laughs> you literally cannot continue here. <laughs> I didn't even realize it skipped it before and then I found out the hard way. Up. Like I thought the game would like just give it to you anyway. Yeah. Can what? Oops. Can one of you explain as uh, the two amulets I have on and how they work together? Because um, uh, like with my extra yeah, HP and right, I guess you could do that. So there's um, as Eraser Eraser explained already. Um, he has um, Arsl's, Arslan's glory equipped, which is the amulet that lets you um, deal more damage if you have full HP. So the base damage value is 5, and with the amulet it's 7. So it's like a 40-ish percent increase in damage, which is, which is huge. Um, now that stipulation that you need to have full health only applies to your base health. In the following sense, the Razor also has an amulet equipped, which is called Blessing. It basically gives you extra HP. Look at the Ooh. HP bar, with this little orange bit. And actually he is allowed, as you see here, he's allowed to take damage um, and the amulet is still active as long as there's a bit of orange left. So that's what I mean by the base value. The, the red health bar, his base health, which is 60 HP right now, um, as long as that's at uh, 60, at max, the amulet will be active. Now. Um, raises below 60, the amulet, as you see, is kind of grayed out, it's not active anymore. Ooh. So that... Wee, nothing works. <laughs> uh, right, so they're wondering... The, yeah, oh, please. No, no, but... I was gonna say, if you're wondering why the shopkeeper back there, why the camera was frozen on the shopkeeper, it's because of the skip I did earlier. Right, yeah, on the way back, the game press to play two guts and set the same time, somehow. Yeah. And yeah, and but you, you can just exit and it will fix itself. That's yeah, it was faster just to run. <laughs> and I think Eraser did touch on it uh, when the amulets are picked up. But the the reason why there's a difference is that 
over the short amount of the challenge, the amulets are not really worth it. Um, but obviously, whereas is going to do more of the game after the section that's done the challenge, it, it is actually worth it because you do way more. Uh, the, the boss health is the boss he boss's health gets, I guess, like more uh, relevant to get down faster. Yeah, so faster. I never actually explicitly tested that, but it seems to be the case. Well, well, what am I doing? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to heal just to be safe. Nice. I'm so bad at parrying that uh, tail attack. <laughs> but you can skip this cycle. Also, here I will try to skip a fight. Not so rough with the yeah. And that's it. We just leave the room before the fight starts and Very nice. voila. Very good. Also, the thing we, I, we picked up the dash. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I just want, to, just want to say that's the thing I also mentioned during the glitch exhibition is this, this behavior of the game where if you're in a boss fight and you exit the room, um, the game treats it internally as you have completed that boss fight. So once you re-enter, the fight is over. That not only works there with the Skippy Razor did, but also with other boss fights like that. Asta fight, for example, that I showed. Um, and it's really useful. Fun fact, if you get an update or like you die and come back and all, uh, the fight will actually trigger, so you have to be careful. Like there is some stuff that do, that can re-trigger the fight. <laughs> And I yeah, may decide to show you what the boss it. fight I may decide to show you what the fight is. I'm definitely not going to mess it. <laughs> <laughs> so, a razor was very uh, understandably scared there. So, that guy with the big <laughs> pink uh, staff, if he catches you, he will put you into prison. Uh, which is an area that would, I don't even know how many minutes it would lose, but probably uh, at least two, I would imagine, because yeah, it's, it's quite kinda, far no away. Fun. Yeah, so you really, really don't want to kill. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I did it. At, sorry. I was just looking at, get, looking at Razor's screen. The, the, the guy was getting close again. Um, but yeah, you really don't want to get him uh, to get you in like the catch enemy. Like he can damage you, that's fine. But if he catches you specifically with like his catch move, um, yeah, like the, then the he sends you to prison. Thing glows with like a color if they're doing the attack, as you can see in this cutscene. Straight to jail. Yeah. Yes. And I would actually like, I, I would have liked for him to dam to damage me, but uh, he didn't want to, so it's okay. Because we need to get like below one HP. And normally I wouldn't have uh, healed myself previously, but I just did it for safety. Because I need to die later. I can get it one more time, please. Thank you. The way I kind of deal with those en enemies is like, I have like set positions where I know they're going to show up. Like get ready to do a dodge instead of a, uh, a dash, because you can't get past with a da dash. Regarding uh, uh, movement optimization, when you slide off, on, off of an edge, like here, you get an extra boost. So you kind of want to do that. What happens if you turn around? Uh, I think I have enough HP. See, will Vin get caught by the jailer? Nah. <laughs> immediately jinx it. Here we go. Yeah, immediately gets caught. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Oh my god. Like, I wanted to play safe and I almost died <laughs> due to it. So, so uh, I like, remember. always show up, like, right next to the load zones when you try to leave. So I just, like, always dash when I get there. Or, or sorry, yeah, that's, like, ground dash. Oh, I don't oh. have any uh, other arrows here. Uh -oh. So here there is a skip you can do, like in the puzzle I'm currently doing, but save like around 10 seconds. But uh, I'm bad at it. I could try it, but 
it's not worth uh, go watch the top runner on the challenge they can definitely do that reliably but it's so precise Come on. Here we kill him with the Atha Surge, which is like a one hit KO. Uh, I have to open the teleporter, I have to remember that, which makes things way scarier here. So like I have to open this because I'm gonna do like the rest of the run. Like this is the most important teleporter. All right, now on to another boss. You have to lose this fight. Like there is no way you have to lose it. So that's why we want it to be as low HP as possible. And what kind of attitude is that? Yours? You have to want to win. No winners attitude. <laughs> and I'm gonna try to skip a cutscene as well. Yes, got it. So pretty much what happened is that I, I hit him with an arrow at the same time I got hit and that skipped a really long animation. Like that saved like 20 seconds or so. And now we are in the depths, which is basically like swirls. This is the use of the shotgun here that you need. We mentioned earlier. Actually, just, just thinking about it, is, is it the only one you need, like, like theoretically, uh, to complete the game? Not sure about like, that. I'm just trying. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to think. Like, if there's any time you actually, because I know you don't need the chakram to do the. Uh, there's like a puzzle later on which expects you to use it, but you don't have to. So I think that might literally be the only place. Question yeah, mark? not sure. Well, at least in any percent routing, this was or is the only road uh, roadblock. This truck yeah. here, yeah. So far. Right. Something really annoying about the room that raises is in there is I, I don't know really why it happens, but those two sort of uh, those two like waterfall of like sewage uh, that come down from the ceiling. Uh, the damage hitbox for them is seemingly like just activated at the beginning of the room. So if you actually uh, if you go through as quick as possible, you will get hit by that poison. There's like no way around it, even though the visual doesn't quite match up with uh, with what you're seeing. It's very frustrating. Good physics here, by the way. That's, I think that's how physics works, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> not sure. That's, that's, that's how it works sure. in real life, <laughs> Yeah, no, that's how it works. <laughs> I mean... Have you never went to... I mean, I, I went to high school, I know. You know? Well, I, I have a physics degree, I know. Same here. <laughs> so, I think Vin and me, we are, we are uh, um, the people to ask for this one. I, I mean, I would degree, believe actually. Vin, but you, Toka, I'm not sure. I have a physics and math degree. <laughs> literally PhD in quantum physics, people. Oh. Nice. Okay, sure. Alright, so here I'm gonna have another boss fight. Uh, I already. Oh come on! I wish I could have practiced looking for the mirror this, right now. Uh, I was so bad that I did have low enough health for that enemy to kill what? me quickly for the boss. Did you the last hit of your after surge not hit then? Yeah, it did nothing. Yeah, he dodged that. That's okay. Yeah. Damn. All right. Up here, I'm also picking something that normally people do not pick, but once again, full run. And we have to work slowly, slowly, slowly. I'm really bad, and Eraser is picking up extra stuff, so it evens out. <laughs> <laughs> the quick note on the after surges, much like the amulets, you have to equip them, so you can only have two of these special moves um, 
ready at the same time. So once he raises that Awakwa walk Kree, he has to um, activate that surge picked up. He doesn't want to grab it, okay? So now it tells me to go to the pit of Internal Ten, which is the god of this category. No, it's okay. So now I want to give a oh sorry, like a yeah. We have a new power, which is like to be able to place a shadow, and that's mandatory to progress. And so it's like a warp point, so you can warp back to it when you press it again. That's a really cool. Like it's one of my favorite abilities in any Metroidvania. Like they use it in so many different ways. Like you can use it for exploration. You can use it to like you know, uh, if you like mess up or like if you think you're gonna mess up, you can use yeah. it as like a save point. But, but they also like they manage to weave it really well into the boss fights as well. So it's like it has so many different applications of how you use that skill. I think it's really impressive. You can also use it just for like general combat too, if you want to. Yeah. Not to and do it's damage, actually, obviously, but for life strategy, getting behind and, an enemy usually. And it's actually mandatory to dodge some attacks from some bosses. Right. I mean, you, you can, even, you, there is a way to like use it offensively if you do the, uh, like if you charge up a power attack and then hit your shadow and yeah. then charge up another power attack, you can do like a double power attack. But you don't, like, you don't need to damage. recharge it, you just teleport back to the point that it was charged. Yeah. But it's not... Which I don't think we really use like in the speedrun, but it's still really cool that there's just the application of it, I think. Yeah, but it's not like the, the, sh the warping itself is doing damage. If I remember correctly, there's also an amulet which um, triggers an explosion of wherever the shadow yeah. is, like when you return to it or something like that. Oh, that's true actually, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Never used it, but it does exist. Yeah, same. Uh, I might uh, uh, I, okay. Here there was like an optimal way to do things. I uh, did not that? do it. What? All right. Up. Oh, I need to remember to equip. Did you save before? For some reason, no. For some reason, my combo is broken. Alright, well, uh, GG. <laughs> What's a little bit annoying is that for, for boss fights, it always gives you like a... Hey, you can respawn and try the boss again, but for the mini bosses, it does not give you the same... Uh, okay. Does not give you the same option to do that for the, the sa alternate Sargon, which is annoying. Yeah, you it's brutal. Gotta go back to like the true checkpoint. Would have like safety saved, that's the first time I ever died to that boss, because it's usually really easy, but... My combo is broken for some reason. Oh. Oh. So, to enter the Sun Pit, we need two powers. We need Clairvoyance, which is the power I'm gonna get now, and the Dimensional Claw. But, uh, oops, okay. You will see that uh, that's what the game wants us to get, but that's not what we will get. We will only get Clairvoyance. We can skip the Dimensional Claw. I will still get like the dimensional flow after, but I will show you like how to like one of the way to actually uh, finish this with only like uh, clairvoyant. I'm gonna do like the easy method, like I cannot do like the other one, and I did not practice much like oops. because I'm more focused about oops. full game runs right now. Oops. <laughs> sure. Nice uh, aim assist. Come on. Just out of interest, uh, what is uh, everyone's favorite like area of the game casually? Because for me, it's definitely the archives. Like, I think there's so many interesting mechanics, like where like you're reacting to like the prince's position or those movable blocks i think they're really cool i don't know about you guys i haven't like been the full game yet so i probably can't answer that yet yeah Ooh, what, what? but uh Dip. if i were to give an answer right now probably the um that hits me. i don't know what it's called but it's like the um where you battle where you beat the boss with like the giant axe uh, 
Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, Raging Sea. Like, yeah, 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 that. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that's the also area bad. I hate the most. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Like, hey, I like the concept, but it's supposed awkward. to go. But this from a casual perspective, I I think I also like Raging Sea the most. Like, when you enter the area, little spoiler, I guess, but we'll see it anyway later. Um, like, the, the the area is kind of frozen in time, and so is the sea and the waves and everything. It just looks so scenic and so cool, to me at least. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I love it. Yeah, so that's yeah, how I, the boss normally goes there. First time was I, just a flop. I, I love how it looks. I hate how it plays. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, there is just too many annoying enemies. Okay. <laughs> no problem. A very nice platform there on Eraser's side. Combining different abilities. I always get hit there because the... I think it's a little faster. You're wrong. The, uh, the noises that Eraser made are really integral to uh, platforming well, <laughs> I think. Yeah. It gives you a little extra boost, those coyote frames. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm someone that is really expressive when I'm playing. <laughs> let's, let's put it that way. <laughs> if you're ever having trouble with some platforming, just make noises. My <laughs> okay. So, up. This is one of my favorite sections because, like, we are talking about favorite section. I also love like secret archive, like Joe. But the Temple of Knowledge with these puzzle rooms are my favorite. I think I truly love the puzzles. I think something that's really interesting is like the the first puzzle that Eraser's just done. There is the only puzzle that can't be one uh, two cycled, right? Like the technically yeah, the easiest, so. easiest, uh, technically the easiest puzzle is the only one that can't be done in two cycles. Every other one can be done too. Although it can be pretty hard to do them in two cycles. The the one specifically right now requires some pretty good movement to 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 be able to do that in two. Oh. Hi. Remembering where to go here. I just got it. So the next room eraser will do. Um, it's the one I also showed in the um, glitch exhibition where you can do the button glitch. Although I'm pretty sure it won't do it here. No. Because it's also pretty, it's kind of finicky. Yeah. But I'm like, going to press the button It does work pretty before. consistently, but I'm not sure it's even any faster anyway. And I'm going to put my shadow. So the fact that I press the button at the beginning of the room means that on the second phase, the, the button will be pressed and I can just teleport back and fall out. Just keep everything. Very nice. This teleporter that's in here. The racer got like an hour ago, probably. <laughs> uh, only, only half a half an hour. <laughs> Something here. I press this early. But here it's a little bit more tight, so I may fail. No, okay, nice. Always get confused in this area. And we don't need to press the lever. And voila. For some reason with those doors that you hit to open, if you use the chakram, they open with just that. So usually what I do. Yeah, it's true. I forgot to mention that. That's the same thing like for the teleporter. Oh, is it? I did not know that. Yeah, you can break the thing from the teleporter like Oh, uh, nice. That's awesome. In, in one go. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I'm learning so many new things. <laughs> and here, we are not going to work slowly. We are going to use our Afra Surge to pick this one up really fast. I used, I used to use like the down charge attack because that can break it in like two hits, I guess it would be. But yeah, didn't know you could use that there too. That's awesome. Top three Up. contender now. Win. <laughs> <laughs> and now we have clairvoyance, which basically like do like the bell thing from earlier, which is uh, just uh, make some platform uh, workable. Uh, can you open? Thank you. 
Yeah, it's similar, similar, similar to the memory recall power from Forgotten Sands, where, um, well, as you saw, you just recall um, or activate areas that would be there or all the whatever at the press of a button. We keep it. Is being able to to talk about forgotten sense in 2024. Just saying. <laughs> and it's finally Watch not the fight. newest Prince of Persia game anymore. <laughs> right? <laughs> so cool. <laughs> you should try and I mean, always. Uh, like, that is... You should try and always juggle like the enemies in the air. You can do like two, like three combos before they hit the ground again. Yeah, combat in this game is incredibly versatile. Like you have yeah. a big amount of base things you can do, and then you can also combine them in all kinds of ways, which makes for a huge amount of complexity. Uh, I have to open this and get some money. Very cool. These enemies can freeze you too, which is annoying. There's something that I do think is quite interesting is, um, I mean, this this year will mark uh, 10 years of speedrunning uh, Prince of Persia games for me, and wow. I think 9 for Eraser and Toka. I'm not sure about Vin. Um, we've, uh, we've all been speedrunning for a very long time. I think it's 10. Uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy, right? And it's like, this is the first Prince of Persia game that's released since we've all been speedrunning it as a community so like this is this is actually the first game we've ever rooted like new on the fly with everyone else it's a yeah. very very cool yeah. experience wow that is so the cool. shock there is like a little skip you're meant to like get that a different way of a after <laughs> really quick to explain what the is doing right now or trying at least oh. is to get to the <laughs> last seal um by doing a little skip because so you're supposed to destroy three um, kind of seals here with a power attack. And um, two of them are on the same height level. And one um, one thing the power attack does in this game is that the, the wave it creates, the power wave, that goes on until it hits a wall. Um, but because those two seals are at the same height level, the power attack would just destroy both of them at the same time. That's why um, the... Oh, big explosion outside, sorry. Um, the, <laughs> that's why the developers put an invisible wall in between, which you see right here. That's what the eraser is standing on. So from that, you can just go to the other side. So you break one seal, you get to the wall with the uh, sword hover, get to the other one and break it. And that way, at least for the challenge, you and can like time just for uh, skip a power. Right, and that's time for a razor. Very nice. Well uh, done. 37 minutes. Very nice. Uh, took is way too long. That, that, that one mini boss death is such a huge time loss for Vin, but yeah. it's, uh, it's a shame. But Had my time back, I would have taken a, a safety save there, but did not expect it either. Did the difficult cool. boss, no problem. Usually I do that in two cycles as well, but it was kind of slow. Also, that like ex that's probably like the I guess like the hardest bow uh, sword hover uh, to, to to be able to skip that dimensional claw. Um, that is probably the hardest uh, sword hover to do. And I, I guess we, I, I don't yeah. know if we really touched on it, but I, I would say like pretty objectively, it's it's much harder to sword hover on controller than it is on keyboard. Yeah. On keyboard. It's very, very easy because you're just sort of alternating W and S. Whereas on controller, I believe you've got to sort of do like half circles, right? Yeah, exactly. And like it. Well, it's... assuming, or assuming you're doing it on analog stick, you can rebind to the D pad, and then it's um, like it's still a bit easier on keyboard, but then it's kind of on pause. Yeah, on analog, I, I, on analog stick. Yeah, I do it I on never analog stick. About that. Like I never rebound anything. Like I do not rebound things like uh, for the game. Uh, the only issue I have is that I'm used to do them to the right, but I'm not used to do them to the left because every sword over we really have in the game are going to the right. So there yeah. is a, a, a way longer sword over that I will showcase uh, when Zin will be over. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll finish. 
uh, there is one that is longer, but it's going to the right, so I'm more consistent to it. I can still fail it. I'm, I'm not uh, invincible, but uh, like, yeah. It's it's like you have to focus more on your rhythm than just on matching, basically, and that's what makes them doable. Yeah. So the way I, I kind of just like don't mash when I do them. Yeah, exactly. Make sure to hold the button. Yeah. You also can't yeah. do them after jumping up a wall, which kind of restricts them. Oh. So here, I'm back like at the beginning of the sand pit, but this time like it's not open. I prepare a save where it was not open because when it's open, like it saves. But normally I should be in the exact same state as I was on the previous save. Just like the sand pit is not open and I will be able to continue the run with that. But for now, let's cheer Viney to finish in his Got the last power that we need, so it's just a race to the, the pit now. Nice. I didn't see someone mentioned in chat, and I'm not actually sure myself. I'm not sure about anyone else in the call, but does, does language have any effect on the run, or have we just not even, there's not been enough tests on that yet? Uh, there was some tests sure. in the introduction, and there was no difference. So we didn't push it further, but yeah, there was not, not really any difference. I thought there was something that it messes with, but I forget now. So yeah, uh, like the only reason like I'm playing in English is just that uh -huh. I started playing in English. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think at some point when I, because I, I still haven't beaten the game in in uh, Immortal, and I really want to do it. Uh, and I think at this point I'm playing with the Farsi, uh, with the Persian, basically like the Farsi uh, dub, mm -hmm. which is really cool that they added that, like really really cool. Right, yeah. I, I just want to mention real quick, for those unaware, Immortal, that's the highest difficulty in this game, so that's called, in case you needed context for that. Yeah, true. the highest preset difficulty. Because <laughs> you, you, can, you can go harder. <laughs> you could take it even further, wow. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, accessibility features that are there to, you know, you, you can go, you can make things easier than Rookie, but you can actually, uh, it's so tweakable that you can actually make things harder than uh, than Immortal as well, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I do like that casually. We should set a bounty for like a like a max difficulty speedrun. Like who can do that the fastest? That'd be fr pretty fun, I think. Mm, yeah, okay, that would be really interesting. I, I assume that'll be like a thing. Yeah, I wouldn't mind doing that. I usually love playing games on the hardest difficulty. So far, the only full game runs I'm aware of, like um, of, of the full game, not the not the challenges, are any percent where the language because of the zombie glitch doesn't really matter, and NMG, but on rookie. Um, yeah. But I'm, I'm as the others just said, I'm certain um, that model runs will also be a thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, think I don't know if a racer did that, but I um. I attack that first seal from further away, so you don't get the uh, talking with the old man. Yeah, I did. But then I fell and I, I had to talk to him anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Time is coming up for me in any second. Time. GG. Well done. Okay, nice. That's like right in tasty, mate. Right. Terrible death, but recovered after that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was going to say, with all of that considered, still finishing underestimate and, you know, that really being the difference is still pretty impressive. Well done to both of you. Yeah, definitely less, Thanks. like, at least five minutes to that death. <laughs> and yeah, like, don't hesitate, like, to check the speedrun.com challenge. There is a leaderboard. There is people that are crazy good at the game. My time, load less, was a 37. Uh, my PB is a 34. And there is people getting a 30-minute time flat. So, you know, they are four minutes faster than me uh, and they are really crazy optimizing literally everything and they deserve uh, all respect and love 
So yeah, don't hesitate to go and check them out. And uh, I think I can uh, start now my run. Like I yes, don't know if there is a timer. Before you do that, I just want to give uh, Vinev, uh, one, a thank you for racing yeah. in this and in participating, and two, an opportunity if you'd like to do any shout-outs or, or plugs or anything like that. Uh, just the pop speedrunning community and GDQ itself. Thanks for organizing this. Awesome. Yes, we appreciate it. Thank you so much for uh, putting on that excellent showcase. And yeah, so we're just going to make a slight adjustment. We're going to take a racer's time from the race. So the 38, 32, you're going to see that added there at the bottom. We're going to make uh, the estimate a little bit longer. And then a racer is just going to finish the game from this point forward. Uh, so you can see what else the game has to offer. So I, be I believe uh, whenever you're ready, racer, if you can just give us a countdown, you'll be you'll be good to go and resume. Okay, so we can go in three, two, one, and go. Woo! Uh, all right. So More come game. here. Let's go. Yeah. So I'm not doing slide count setting because right now, like, I could do them, but uh, I'm not doing them because uh, they kind of hurt my hands, but uh, they are totally legit. So we skip the, the, the sand bit right now, and we are going to go get the dimension claw power. So up, we go through here. Up, which is Sunken Arbor, and that's actually like an area that is quite difficult, especially here. So, up, I will have to focus a little bit. Okay, so just to be clear about that, in the challenge run that the two just did, um, they broke the seal to the eternal, um, bit of uh, eternal sands right away. However, if you do a full game run, um, you actually need the power you skip, like the skip they did with the invisible wall. Um, that also skips a power, which Eraser's getting now. And because he's completing the full game, he has to get it first anyway. So just to put into context why he's not opening the seal already like he just did. Exactly. But we won't go to the section where that power is normally. Yeah. We are gonna enter this area, which is a forge. Oh. Here I'm waiting a little bit to not the floor. Right. And I'm gonna buy some upgrades. So I'm gonna improve my sword and the amulet that give me more power when I'm at full HP. Right, I believe you also picked up an extra chest in the catacombs with 200 crystals, so you can afford yeah. this, right? Yes, exactly. That's 200 crystals. And as you can see, I'm at 136, so that was totally needed. And here, they give you like a peek into the the latest area. But what we do is go through here. Ah, that, that sword over ring, but I can No, I cannot save it. Okay. I'll just try again. This is, um, especially on controller, Pretty difficult because it's a uh, rather long sword hover. We thought it was just great, very nice. Real quick to put the, the damage into perspective, so all the upgrades you got. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe your base um, attack damage with at full health is now 10. Uh, like it's uh, 2 plus 1 from the amulet to the upgrade and then plus 2 for the, the sword. I know it's plus two for the sword, but I'm not sure for the amulet, right. honestly. Ooh, yeah, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's 10 right now. And the, so the, the base attack value is 5, so with every, everything Razor has now double damage, essentially, as long as he um, has full base health. Here I could have skipped that dialogue, but I, I was a little bit too much to the right. It's okay, as long as I don't get hit anymore, because I want to keep my full HP right now. Because there is a fight coming up. I don't think I will be able to keep it for the boss, but uh, it's okay. And also, there's going to be a strat after the boss, which means that he can't uh, use the Wakwak Tree to, to, to get back to full health. Like, Yeah, exactly. Like, we're doing, right a, doing a death warp. So, the Wakwak Tree I, I, I got where I uh, restarted from. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, uh, is uh, the point where I will uh, respawn. 
like near the sand pit. And I want to for it like to stay that way. Because that will just save me like the some backtrack time. Here, with your shadow. Yeah. Oh, I'm being careful because vine are a little bit finicky, like vine and ropes in general. And you still have a, you still have the double damage. Only just, but uh, the double damage is there. You can always tell uh, if you look at the the little amulet icon just beneath the the health bar. It'll let you know if uh, the double damage buff is active. Come on, come on. No. Like here I will lose it. Oh actually I did not lose it. Nice. Okay. So I did uh, I went into the boss like this and I did not lose it. So that's good. But no but if I get hit even one time here, I'm gonna get it. So this is Kiana, the forest queen, and that's one of the coolest boss fights possible. So there is multiple phase. That's where Toka triggered zombie during the glitch exhibition. Uh, right, so the okay. change. I, I, I didn't properly explain it during the expedition, but it was clear Oops. that Jet at the time. Um, uh, the way to get zombie there was to die during this transition between this um, part of the boss fight and this lower thing the, with the red background and everything. Um, and that death during the cutscene is what uh, makes Sargon in you Invincible. So here I lost my amulet. But it's okay, I will uh, drink my potion after this phase to enable it again. But if I get it once, I will lose it. But this should be fine. Because even if I lose it, like the rest of the phase will be really fast. I just need to... Yeah, the, so the potion does, yes, yes. while it gets uh, Sargon back to full health, it does not reset the um, does not reset the blessing amulet, which gives like more than max H HP and lets you keep the uh, Arslan's uh, glory amulet for longer. Yeah, yeah, that can, that can only be regained when you uh, go back to a Wagwag tree. Yeah, exactly. Also, shout out to the developers for calling it Wak Wak Tree because I love hearing everybody say Wak Wak Tree. Like it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's such a such a funny name for uh, like I don't, I don't I have no idea what it actually means, uh, but it's a uh, it's 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 a great one. All right, so now we got the dimensional claw power, which allows us to store things in another dimension like this, and to throw them. But uh, we're gonna die. To we'll respawn at the sand pit. Because we did not save at any point and we didn't uh, at a work factory. And boom! We are here with all the power. And now we are gonna break the seal legit. Like this. We grab this and we throw it here. Oops. Yeah. Here I place a shadow. It's because I will break the last one with a charge attack and then I will teleport back to my shadow during this animation, which saves like a little bit of travel time. And now we are back into the sun pit. Oof. Okay, uh, I have to remember to actually do one extra thing here for the showcase which is to fight a boss that normally we don't, but I want to showcase a skip later and save a little bit of time on, on the estimate. Which is not NMG, but everything else that I'm gonna do is NMG. We're gonna... This, this category is probably gonna only be run here, and it's called SMG, which is some <laughs> major glitches. Yeah. There's a world exclusive category. <laughs> Uh, oh. uh, there is no explosion. Uh, where did I pick it up earlier? Oh, it's on top, right? Sorry, uh, I can't remember where it is. 
All good, all good, all good, all good. Just it's gonna save. Right, yeah. Then, yeah, it should I be here, right? Yeah. Okay. No, I don't want you. <laughs> no, I have to wait for the cooldown. Okay, that's something that usually like we don't do. So yeah, sorry for not being sure. We have to break this. And I'm gonna do that to get the power. So this is not part of the route normally, but this allows the Razor to pick up uh, a pretty powerful Aether Surge. It basically turns the, uh, Sargon into Superman, really, I would argue. Yeah. And I'm gonna try to showcase uh, the skip I want to do with it, but if I can't do it, I will just uh, fly. So you do know how to fly, it's great. Of course I do. You teach me. <laughs> you taught me, sorry. Indeed. There's no in-game tutorial for that one, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Toka knows how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So, this area is great. We are gonna go try to find the... Uh, oops. The big serpent that Toka showed you earlier. Once again, don't want to spoil too much on the story. Because we're already gonna spoil a few things. Really, but, uh, it, it's, as you said, it's a big snake. It's it's whatever. <laughs> exactly. And uh, for people who like Rayman and uh, the flight section in Rayman, well, this is for you, I guess, because this is literally the same thing. And losing time here hurts a lot. Because you respond to the last yeah. normal ground that you touch. So if I touch anything, I'm gonna lose a lot of time. Like yesterday, I lost over two minutes in this section. Like I think it's, it's, it's interesting as well because like these these worm monsters, like the, the the hitbox on them is actually pretty kind. Like yeah. you, you can get deceivingly yeah. close to them, but it's still really scary. Exactly, like, uh, they have like, basically like everything that is not like the middle, the center of their body, you can touch it. And you will not die. But at the same time, do you really want to take the risk and lose a minute? <laughs> no. <laughs> at least right now, <laughs> like with the current optimization of the run, no. Okay, that was close. And so our goal is to break two more uh, seals to be able to fight the boss. And so sometimes you see me parry in the air, it's, uh, it's uh, to fall uh, faster. I did not know that. Yeah. You can actually even like chain, chain uh, uh, parry and, uh, and dashing, but uh, that's just smashing. And if you can do that, just like cancel, honestly. Like that, basically. Yeah, just annihilate your keyboard instead. Like press, 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 press. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so before it was the Rayman version. Now it's these uh, little things, but uh, when you are in front of them, they try to crush you. But we can also use them to progress. To progress. Blah, blah, blah. Mixing this is another area of the game, game that I just I love playing through. Yeah, it just is so satisfying. Also, thanks, Eriza, for showing us how dying to these would look like. That makes for a good all-around experience, I think. No problem. I I, very, I, 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 I wanted you like to I wanted to remind you about how you played the game. You know. <laughs> <Pardon>. Yes, <laughs> we appreciate that. Okay, that was a little bit early, but it's okay. Like, this section is great. Like, the other one, I do not like it, but this one, I love it. All right. Uh, 
we're gonna open this and we are gonna take this for quite free. So right now, next time we die, we're gonna respawn at this one. And it's time for Hasdaha. I remember this from like two hours ago. Yeah. <laughs> I think it'll look a little different though. I'm guessing. <laughs> The after de after surge, the bow one does so much damage. Yeah, it's actually crazy. That's actually a runner that joined thanks to the 10k challenge called Karim that suggested this one. And uh, shout out to to him. Oh. oh, we pick this up. Oh come on! Again, like no, 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 no. Wait, no, <laughs> ah, and no, I got hit. I tried. That's so sad. Yeah, I didn't want to parry to save time on the animation because he has, as that has like one HP. She has one HP. It's close. Yeah, it's one arrow. <laughs> <laughs> it well, was I literally tried. Literally one arrow. Yeah. So, Amazing. So that was the boss fight. If you do not cheat like Toka earlier. But yeah, no, I, I did mention it earlier with the shadow. Um, but some, again, something that I really, really like about the skills in this game is the different ways that you can use them. Um, and in that boss fight, you saw when the boss was dropping those bombs from the ceiling, you can use the uh, the dimensional claw to to like store one and throw it back at them. It's just like I, I I think the thing that I liked the most about this game in general was just like the skill usage and 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 how you use them. I thought it was really, really cool. It really feels, feels like you're in the game, like you're interacting with the game. You're doing something because you yeah. think it's cool and it has impact and it works. All right, I'm picking up an wow, HP. Wow, not going for uh, not going for a three HP run. No, <laughs> see, I, I I I would like to finish this run. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. <laughs> uh, I should have just done a task out here, but it's okay. And uh, at this point, you are basically like halfway through the game normally and you get the double jump power. And casually, the double jump power is amazing. You can do so much platforming, you love it, it's so great. Speedrunning wise, I hate it. I do not like it at all. <laughs> and I can explain to you why, why I'm doing this. So uh, why I do not like it, it's because I'm doing jump and dashing as fast as I can. And so sometimes I will actually input a double jump and that will be a little bit awkward and you will see me like double jumping yeah. out of nowhere. Like that. Uh, so, oh, that was definitely just to show you. So now we go of to the temple. Oh, we have to take the elevator again. And thanks to having access to double jump, we can now access this area. Well, technically, if you are good at platforming, you can already access this one, but you will get stuck at some point. Or All if right. you have wings and know how to fly, that would also help. Mm -hmm. oh, but alas. This section is always quite scary whenever I've gone through it. It's uh, like the, these arches, the 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 arrows actually do like a, a pretty decent amount of damage. Sorry, my dog's barking. But the uh, the uh, the um, if you get hit by the, I think it's only two arrows will take away the uh, will take away the extra H uh, the damage buff because the arrows set you on fire and it does like tick damage over time damage. What? Yeah. Yeah, but that's, that's yeah, with two, like you lose it. Up, yo, double jump. So, here, this is a Metroidvania. I'm doing this section first, but I could have done another one. But I like to do this one first because uh, I do not like the other area. That's bad. Mm. Okay, fine. I do not like the other area, and I want the power I will get here to help me with a, a little bit at least. Oh, also nice little skip here. Like, developer really nailed that, like, 
the freedom of movement we have in this game is amazing and that's just so cool. Yeah, so that trap session, you just saw the movement, you saw Razor 2 through that. It's like, I, I, I would say it plays uh -oh. as cool and great as it looks. Like, it's, it's yeah. just so fun. I mean, it's, it's like it, was, it was literally li like just before this uh, hotfix started. We were we were literally talking of like in terms of the route, like what is the best? Is it better to to go to to this boss first or the other boss first? It's like I think that's a it's a really interesting part of uh, like routing a game like this, and mm -hmm. it's something that Prince of Persia has never really never really had. Like I think two thousand and eight has some open world elements, but not, nothing quite like on the level of the uh, the freedom of choice that this game has. Yeah, no, definitely. And that's why like, I'm really uh, excited to see what will happen to this game like in the next couple of weeks, last month. Yeah, definitely. So, I, I just made like a small detour to get some potion because once again, we really want to finish this. So, you know, getting losing 30 seconds, but getting one more potion and uh, Potion healing a little bit more can be useful. All right, so here you place your shadow, you go back with the double jump, you go to your shadow, and then you can dash. And apparently, you input the wrong direction because you are on controller, <laughs> and you have to do it again. <laughs> oh, look at this! And this is intended. Like everything you see me like doing here is intended. Everything. Yeah. Even dying. Uh, also, that was a nice uh, buffer double jump. Yeah, I will play it safe. Up. I love doing this section. This is one of my favorite sections to do. Feels so good to do this fast. Like I'm not very good at it, but it, when you do manage to nail it all fast, it's it just feels so like. Well, I don't know. It, it feels like you have time powers, you know? It's pretty good. Yeah. Ooh, that's bad. Yeah, yeah, that's bad. I'm gonna lose my amulet already. Yeah. Okay, that started really poorly. It's okay. Yeah. Come on, jump. Jump over me. Thank you. Uh, I shouldn't have done that. Uh, it's okay. Because he was gonna go like into his face. Never mind. We can manage. Yeah, I, that's something that I don't think we've actually really talked about. Like we've, we've mentioned that the boss has like bosses have phases, um, but, but pretty much, I think pretty much every boss has like a like a three phase. Every every main boss has like three phases. Yeah. Um, although it's not like a distinct HP bar, um, you'll notice that like uh, uh, about a third, thirty three percent of the the, the HP damage you can still hit the boss but they don't really take any damage because it's, they're like waiting for a like a cutscene trigger to to do the next section and that will yeah, happen yeah. again uh, like it happens once at 66 percent and then again at 33 percent hp right yeah uh, i press the potion twice i'm gonna die uh that's actually really bad i'm not kidding i'm, I'm gonna die yeah uh okay you got this. I think it's you know it's, it is one thing. Like obviously we are doing the run right now on the rookie difficulty, but the game expects you to have like a lot more HP, a lot more like damage upgrades at this point. Um, and even you know we've only got a certain selection of Athra powers. Um, so these boss fights, although it is on rookie, it is deceivingly difficult. Um, not to mention just the fact that the move sets themselves are pretty hard, pretty hard to learn. Um, but very, but again, very satisfying. But it's a, it's a hard game, yo. It's a really hard game. It certainly seems that way. That was a nice combo. Yeah, but now I'm kind of stuck. Thank you. But one of the things I needed right now. Let's go. Hey, nice. Very good. Okay. So yeah, that was tough. Uh, that's not normally how you do this boss fight, but uh, I had to adapt to me playing badly at first. That was a heck of an adaptation. Well done. Okay.
I think my heart rate is at least at 200 right now, but uh, it's fine because <laughs> if I die, that's not gonna be a, a, a good chunk of time loss. Okay, so now we do the arrow. We have to shoot four arrows basically uh, to progress into the story. Once again, don't want to spoil too much. Why we are fighting, infighting, and all. Play the game, you will like it. Uh, oh, I don't need to pick this one because I already have an Astra 3. Oh, and now we are gonna fight another one. Which is like the favorite area of Toka and Vin, apparently. <laughs> Casually, at least, anyway. Oh, so that's why we took this what? teleporter before. How, how do you have the three Athra search already? Uh, it's because I did an extra alternate Zargon back like in the sun pit. Oh, yes, no, yeah, the Gilgamesh. The, yes, yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, oh, come on. Being Thank silly. You. All right, so up, I take this, I throw this, and oh, the wood broke. Something that's quite cool, obviously we didn't do it in this run, but you can actually, you can you can force an enemy to break that wall early. You don't actually need to, yeah. to have the dimensional claw for that section. I'm always getting hit by that trap, it's okay. That's literally my purpose in life. <laughs> Just too fast, man. <laughs> but even casually, even casually, like I visited this area hundreds of times when I was cleaning up the game to get 100%. I was always getting hit by that trap. <laughs> always. <laughs> I just can't dodge it. I always uh, oops, input a dash. So up. So yeah, here you can slide see. cancels makes that. Uh, you can dodge it with the slide cancels, I think. Yeah, but I'm not a cheater, you know, by using like a movement <laughs> tech in the game. I was waiting for it. I, I was see, waiting for I it. I see. <laughs> 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 no, like Joker side, uh, side canceling is totally valid, by the way. It, it's just. Me, like physically, I cannot do them properly. So. And right, I don't I want mean, to. We, we, we've been, we've been, uh, we've been running ten years, so yeah. <laughs> we, we're, we're old at this point. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Come on, come on. Don't shoot me! Don't shoot me! Okay, so that's one of that's the power I got, which is I cannot teleport to my chakra. Oh, that's nice, actually. Yeah. So uh, the, the route that I've been doing for full game, I've, I've not done too many. I've only done. Uh, two or three full game runs, um, but I I normally go to this boss first on on my one. Um, but obviously that 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 move that uh, a razor just used, I I don't actually have. Um, and now that I'm seeing him do that, I kind of want to do his route because <laughs> those those jellyfish are really annoying actually to to platform past. Yeah. Uh, That should be it, or is there one more? Oh, okay, that's it. So yeah, sometimes you get mandatory combat in this game. Which is okay, because combat is fun, but... Okay, first time I actually grab this. <laughs> um, I've tried really hard to skip that combat fight with like a hover, but it's just not possible, I don't think. Like, because that, 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 as mandatory fights go, um, considering that's like just normal enemies, that one takes like a fair amount of time because there's like three waves of enemies. So if yeah. you could skip that one, it'd be a, a good little uh, 20 second time save or something like that. Um, but yeah, I've not been able to, to skip that one with hovers. Yeah. So I hope that you enjoy having the sea being to totally frozen in time because now everything moves. Are you fixed time? Come on, man. What are you doing? <laughs> Also, a weird little thing is uh, like you, you've seen throughout the run using the chakram to, to destroy teleporters instantly. For some reason, it doesn't work on that one. Just that, just that one, just that one there. You have to hit with your swords for some reason. Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> Me neither. Mm. Uh, yeah. Okay. Slide, just in case. Slide? Can't be that. I'm not cancelling <laughs> it. <laughs> I'll take it, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Up here I'm saving just to get full HP and onto another boss fight. Okay. This time I will try to make it go better. But uh, if I get it 
twice, I already lose my amulet. Okay. That's fine, like if he hits me with this attack, it's fine. I wanted to do something else, but it's okay. I will use this one now. Oh, that hit me! Well, no, I don't have an amulet anymore. But it's okay. That was really close, that's a little unfair. Alright, but the attack you do not want to get hit with because that's gonna be his uh, super attack, basically. But unfortunately, like he's about to go to third, third phase, so I could not deal a lot of damage. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna. That's actually like you, you could quite easily see that there on the health bar, like even though the attacks are going through. I've got such a love-hate relationship with this boss because it's it's just like. It's so, it feels so quick, uh, and it's like, it's really satisfying to do well, but it's also pretty difficult. What? Oh, that did not look like it. That was, that must have been so close. I... Um, you, just, you, dro you dropped into it right at the end. Like, it must have been like, frames. It's crazy. And then I don't have time to jump! <laughs> Well, <laughs> so now you could you could see like e every attack he can do. See, like they are pretty nice. I hope that you enjoy it. I wanted to show you yeah. how cool animated <laughs> attacks are on that boss. So I really wanted to for you like to see both of them. Apparently, thank you for that. We love seeing as much content as we can. We appreciate it. <laughs> so ju just remember, like ninety nine percent of the fight that happened, and that was what was supposed to happen normally. All right. So there's one more arrow to fire. Yeah. In terms of like the the main story goals. Yeah. Then I'm gonna do three three of four guardians. Varam. Then I'm gonna do Darius, and then I'm gonna go to and Aria. So I think uh, I don't know actually how much time we have left, but yeah. Right, so we go to that temple, to the temple, sorry, so that teleporter, which is literally like the best one in the game. Uh, I will drink because I don't want to die. Once again, if I die, I go to the previous Quack Quack Tree, which is just before Orod, so I will have to redo the teleporter and take back that elevator. Up. So, oh, so here, what we discussed with Joe like uh, earlier is. Uh, not having to redo this section by taking a Wack Wack Tree in this room, but then that means for, for the bosses, you cannot heal at all, so you will probably like lose your amulet. Uh, oh. Yeah, it's just it's one of those things like where, yeah, it's probably okay. optimal, but in terms of like execution, it requires such a high level. Uh, or at least, you know, it, it's high at the moment because obviously the game is fairly new for, for most people. And even, even, and even and I think me and Eraser probably are the two that have done like n like full game the most. Um, but, you know, we're still pretty not practiced when it comes to, you know, the game's life cycle. If you, if you, if you were to compare this to, you know, how, how much time we've put into Sands of Time or, or any of the other Prince of Persia games, but this is a... It's, you know, we've barely touched it at all. Um, eventually, eventually, it will get very optimized. But right now, it's a, it's a, it's a hard ask, I think, to, uh, yeah. to go through the game without healing too much. Yeah, like if it was the first Prince of Persia, the one released like in 1989, like the MS-DOS version, no problem. I could be as optimized as we want. Yeah, like I have no problem with that one because uh, with the amount of time I spent on it. In this one, we are definitely not there yet. Oops. Hop. So this area and what is coming after is also one of the reasons why we need the dimensional claw power. Unfortunately. Yeah, even in any percent, at least currently.
uh, when you see like uh, this uh, purple thing around the door, that means that you cannot uh, keep an uh, an object into your uh, with your dimensional clock. So this is made to not uh, cheese basically like the next puzzle. So don't take any risk here. So yeah, because like if I could like bring an object here, I would I could just keep one of the puzzles basically. So up, the idea here is to do this to enable the power. Have you uh, have you figured out like an optimal way to deal with the the, the main clock tower puzzle? Because I actually haven't. I'm not like I, I do what feels good, but it's uh, it's just my gut feeling. I don't know if you've looked into to doing it optimally at all. Uh, like, I I believe you can block the red thing, but I could not do it yet. Like there is definitely a way to skip uh, to skip uh, a cycle with, but. Like, I can feel it, I can see it, like, I'm always close, but I still haven't been able to. Alright, so here normally, like, blue and yellow should be around the same time, if not. Yeah, so I don't need to touch them, I just need, like, to block the red. Yeah, so for, for the any percent run, where, as I said, you have to do this puzzle as well, um, we do a slightly different round um, because you have uh, access to the flight glitch and all of that. But if you do that, optimally all the three will align right away. So there's no waiting, no nothing. That's kind of as Joe said, if it works, incredibly satisfying to do. Which I feel is kind of a theme with all of pop speedrunning ever. <laughs> yeah, pretty Too much. much. <laughs> mm. <Sorry>. Okay. <laughs> Up and now we can put the fourth arrow. <coughs> Sorry. Talking a lot. No problem. Yeah, you're carrying right now. You're doing well. All of you are doing a really good job at not only explaining what is happening in the game, but kind of talking through these dis different discoveries. I can't, I, I, I'm just still floored at how much is, how far you all have gone in two weeks. It's just wild. <laughs> So, oh. Now we go back to the temple and yeah, basically the four arrows allows us to change one event in the game. What happened? Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, let's see. I don't have my extra HP because I took too much damage. So you know what? Let's be safe. This is a showcase. Mm -hmm. I mean, in a PB attempt, I would have already reset anyway. Oh. So we are, we are gonna talk to him and take back what part three that normally I do not take. So I'm not sure how to go back, but uh, you know what we'll see. Like that, okay. Okay, apparently I can just do this. Okay, that was easy. Alright. I we just need to focus. Yeah, this fight can be um, yes, okay, nice. very difficult. And I already lost my amulet almost. Uh. Alright, I will try to not use any more adversaries if possible. So yeah, bad enemy can rewind time. kind of OP. So if I get hit in any um, any lines that would have been like a uh, super attack basically. And now that's phase 3. Uh, second one. And he's gonna rewind again. Uh, I don't like that because he will do his on it. Okay. No. Right. Oh wow. <laughs> 
up using sword over sure. is really OP here. I should be able to get yeah, out. Alright, so normally like I could already finish the fight with Assassin, but I want to keep them to do the skip that is major. Just after. Alright, so that was my ham too. Okay. Went well. Just that was really well played, man. Really, really well played. Nice. And now we have the whip ability, like the fabric of time, which is like the official name. And thanks to that, we can normally like progress. And if you remember the Tower of Silence, which is like the area where we went through the forge to, to go there, that's where normally we should go. But that area takes around 10 minutes. And we don't have time right now. So that's okay, why we're, we're gonna do one glitch. Uh, let me I just wanna say real quick, the, the amount of Reddit posts I've seen on um, Hey, what are these weird triangle things? Um, <laughs> is <laughs> yeah. qu quite numerous, honestly. All right. <laughs> so, hop. Here I parried to actually. Uh, I will actually go to heaven. I parried that attack to have three ultra surge. Now I need a walk walk tree. So this is not what you do. Like normally, like you go here, you go to the forge again, and you go to Tower of Silence, and you spend ten minutes here until the boss. Alright, uh, which one do I remove? Uh, I kind of want to keep the arrow, I guess. Because yeah. normally like, I have both for the boss, so I have to actually think about what I want to remove. Alright, so up uh, we go to Clockwork. Alright, hopefully that works like this and I don't have to... I, w I will try twice by restarting the game like it's needed uh, yeah, with the power and uh, if I don't get it I will just uh, uh, how is it called I will um, do it with flight yeah right so you go here super uh, saiyan mode oops. if I don't do this first I go. Oh, there is an invisible wall. Like Toka, you can explain like what is happening. You're just piecing out, honestly. This... <laughs> that's the uh, scientific. Yeah. Uh, that's the quantum physicist description right there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so playing game things, not for us. I fell. Uh, ah, okay. Sure. Let's restart. Ah, it was really close. Yeah. It's okay. I can just try. try again. Once again, so, that's not something don't, you normally do. I did practice for now, but uh, unfortunately, right, sometimes yeah. this happens. And if yeah. I fail one more time, I'll do it with flight. You know, it's okay. I just wanted to show how cool it is that you can actually do it with uh, what the game gives you, you know, like without uh, things that were not planned, like uh, like flight. Mm. You can actually just do it with a normal, uh, normal power from the game. Yeah. So what do you do there, or, or how it works basically, is that there, there is a... Or rather, there, there are two ceilings in that room. There's one above everything, and then there's one slightly lower, where um, you'll also see in a second where that bridge thing is. But be between those two, in terms of vertical um, position, between those two, there's a gap you can get through. So right now he's on um, the first invisible wall, but below the second one, and like this, Razor goes on top of the second one. Now he's on top of the level and go to the exit or to one of the exits, which is usually blocked usually blocked by a wall. But this way, um, he gets to the end of the Tower of Silence early, which else would be, as he said, like around 10 minutes of 10 minutes. platforming. Yeah. And we already are at the boss. Yeah, second try. Easy. Yeah. Wow. All right. So that's the boss that Toka said, like, that's actually, like, it's really cool to play. And I agree with him on that. And I'm going to get it. Yeah. OK. Because Although you have to use... different from the way I played it earlier, but... Just a little bit. All right. So, yeah. 
it is gonna be I'm gonna be like a little bit slower than usual because once again like I have not my usual Astra Surge. I just wanna say I have to actively remind myself that all these attacks he's doing do deal damage. <laughs> like every time I'm like, oh yeah, right, you have to dodge <laughs> this. <laughs> Ah, but uh, I don't like what attack. Okay, so at least. Okay, if he hits me, I'm I'm stuck in his super attack. But yeah, I can show hard. you how cool this is. That actually loses a little bit of time, but it's yeah, just cool. It's mad cool. Because why it loses time? Because now I will trigger his first phase, and he will be using uh, fire and ice together now. But one attack that I don't like, so here I sword over. Ooh, that? Tell me I have time. Okay, I did have time. Interestingly, Darius uh -huh. is is not invincible when he charges this like ring thing he just did in the in the sky, but when he actually does it, he is invincible. He cannot be hit, which is yeah, kind of interesting. Alright, that was Darius. Nice, and pretty good. We only have one more boss in the game. I hope that you enjoy like the little uh, going uh, over the, the scenery like to hit uh, the trigger. Like. That's actually great and uh, that's what we do in any percent with flight. But uh, we do not do that in NMG because uh, spoiler alert in NMG, uh, loading a room from outside it will be forbidden. Yeah. You talk about the path. I, I just have to remember that I have to go down here and we're good. It's uh it's definitely been an interesting conversation. Like like I was saying, we the the rule sets around speedrunning are uh they can always get a little bit heated, uh like you know, deciding what's uh what makes sense, but like what makes a what makes a good run, you know. It's uh Exactly. It's been interesting. Mm. Especially like for arbitrary category, you know, like no major glitches yeah. is an arbitrary category. Like you cannot argue otherwise. Absolutely. And so, yeah. At the end of the day, we are just trying to find like the best, uh, the best middle ground between sticking to the original, like, like literally to the, uh, to the literal definition of no major glitches but also, what is the spirit behind wanting the no major glitches category? Yeah, and that's a, that's a big reason why that that kind of skip, even though it doesn't use any like what you would necessarily say are major glitches. Uh, you know, we took a look at other Metroidvanias, which you know, Prince of Persia has never been a Metroidvania before, but we looked at other Metroidvanias, and it does seem that again, it, it, in the spirit of an, of a Metroidvania. Um, going out of bounds kind of just goes against like you know what you would consider to be uh fair uh in a metroidvania so up oh, up oh, oh, i can use the fabric of time to actually bring enemies to me and go near enemies so that's incredibly useful it's something that i really need to get better at because it's like you, you, because you get the the skill quite near the end of the game, like you, it's it's sometimes hard to remember that. Oh, it's actually yeah, you can you can use this like really offensively. I, I remember it on bosses, but not on the the normal enemies as much. Oops. Yeah. Oh. And also, just to finish about um, NMG, it's not because like this one. Oh. This won't be allowed, like in NMG, but there is, there is like not be, there won't be like a category in the future where that kind of stuff will be allowed, but flight will be disallowed and all. Once again, the, the game is new, so we are gonna go step by step, see what the community wants to do, yeah. little by little. It can take a few months, but we will uh, have a, a good leaderboard by the end of it. I'm sure of it. All right. 
So now I'm gonna go to Varam Tree. And uh, yeah, again, I will try to focus. I have no Astra Surge. Okay. Once again, we won't get into the detail of the story. I know that the developer really likes the story and I don't want to spoil it too much, even though, like, again, we're already spoiling a lot, but if you really want to understand <laughs> all yeah. elements, uh, go ahead and play the game. I know they are quite proud of the story. I agree the story was able to keep me um, into the game. Like, you know, like, usually, often, like in Metroidvania, I, I kind of ignore stories. I, I like the lore element, but the main story are like, yeah, whatever. But this yeah. one actually, I was able like to be kept like into the game, so. Oh. So, yeah. So, like, I will let you guys talk about, uh, during this fight. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, uh, it's pretty fun. It's a pretty fun fight, actually. Um, Again, it's one of those that, because you've got the grappling hook, there's a lot of moves that require using it to, to sort of like travel from one end of the, the battle screen to the other, like really quickly. And if you don't, if you don't use it, then you, you would get hit by the abilities kind of thing. You've got to use your entire tool set, basically. Uh, er, er, everything that you've learned over the course of the game, this is, the, this is where it gets put to the test. Much like with the other bosses, this boss also consists of different phases, actually uh, four, instead of three. And unlike other bosses, the phases are split um, by means of uh, small cutscenes in between, um, like all of them. Oh, I, I could have finished it a little bit earlier, ah, but yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. good. Remove my badge from being a speedrunner. I do no. not deserve it. <laughs> okay, we'll do. Take the license yeah. away. Okay. I do not deserve to be a Prince of Persia mode anymore. <laughs> oh. Okay, oops, but not what and I wanted to do. The rare case where you lose your license by going too slow. Um, doesn't have enough, I guess. Okay. Yeah, this is the, the third phase. Now there's, uh, now there's two of them. Um, and... Oh, that the... is not hit. Oh, that's okay. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, I, I was like, I was actually shocked. Uh... Yeah. All right. So now we're gonna go into the last phase. That's nice. And on the last phase, the game gives you like Gilgamesh power. So like the power I used to go uh, to, to trigger Darius, the game actually give it to me. I don't care about taking damage. I will actually use my alpha surge right now. It's okay. Oh, then we do the counter because it's so cool looking. All right. fact, this this is one of the counters that actually does like a pretty decent chunk of damage as well. It's probably not like fully optimal, but I'd say like out of all of the boss counters, that one probably does one of the most damage. Wow, oh, that one hit as well. Yeah. Oh. All right, so get ready on time, by the way. Time will be on the final input. Which is gonna be... Soon and time. Oof. Very nice. Well done. Ooh. Well done. All right. So yeah, we went a little bit over estimate. Sorry for the little fail, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, you mean you can't predict I'm everything gonna... in a brand new game that just came out two weeks ago? How dare you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Oh my God. So terrible. Uh, also, I pause here. I don't want to show like the end uh, again to preserve like the story. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed the rest of the game. The Tower of Silence is really great casually, but speedrunning wise, it's a little bit uh, the same thing because you climb with double jump and uh, the whip thing. It's uh, so play it casually. This is not like the best area speedrunning wise, according to me. 
casually it's great once again <laughs> so skipping it actually i think was beneficial to this showcase so i hope that you enjoyed it and uh thanks uh, toka and joe like uh, for um being here with me commentating shout out to vin for racing with, with me they rocks and uh, yeah, yeah. shout out no to worries at all man Shout out to the pop community. Uh, as you said, like in pop community was like the Skype group was created like what January second, twenty fifteen, something yeah. like that. Yeah, it was. Yeah, so you know, like in in nine years since the community exists, this is like the first game that is being released. So it's and, huge. And yes, you did hear correctly. It was a Skype group and not yes. a Discord group because Discord did not exist yet. Exactly. Or at least it wasn't. It wasn't super popular. <laughs> Yeah, it was like a long, long, long time ago. Yeah, like you created the group, you invited me, uh, Asko, Raj, so like we were four <laughs> at the beginning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so yeah, that was pretty amazing. So yeah, so we are really excited about this and what the game will give uh, to us. There is a lot of new people joining, so shout outs to them. A lot of people who made the community alive for these next nine years, uh, you are the best. Uh, every year we have... Uh, an annual marathon that we organize online or half online, uh, half on site, so hybrid. Um, it's called Pop Runs. It's usually like at the end of the year, but uh, we will do like more events on our channel, like Pop Runs uh, this year because we want to showcase this game a lot. So expect an event like in February or March with uh, a bunch of 2D Prince of Persia and with a lot of categories for this game. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I don't know what finally I guess uh, shout out to GDQ for having us. It's yes. uh, it's been really really cool. Yeah, thanks a lot for organizing this. Uh I was uh, I was really uh, happy that uh, this was uh, doable. Uh that was one of my main goal like with uh, the release of this game like you know uh, being able like to showcase this game uh in a hot fix. Like uh, I remember uh, like what you did like before for other game and I really wanted like uh, for Prince of Persia to be shown. So yeah, thanks. Shout out to GDQ, shout out to Ubisoft. Yeah. Oh yeah, Ubisoft, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. That's you know, I mean they've been so involved. Um, you know, more more involved than I've ever experienced, at least uh, you know, on the on the release of a new game. Um, you know, like the developers actually actively reaching out and you know, just just the whole concept of the challenge and everything like that. It's um it's been really, really cool to see. Yeah, definitely. And so, yeah, if you are interested in Prince of Persia speedrunning in general, even like as a watcher or as a player, don't hesitate. Um, we are trying to be as welcome as possible. Uh, if there is any issue, of course, like you can always contact us moderators. But uh, so far, we didn't have uh, like any major incident in nine years. So hopefully it will, stay, <laughs> it will continue this way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully. 